أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته once again thank you for joining this special webinar brought to you by Celebrate Mercy my name is Alman Nusrat and uh, you are watching the 30 Nights of Light the communal Quran recitation reflections tonight we'll be joined by Imam Nihal Khan Ustad Hussain Mujaddidi and Sheikh Hisham Mahmood, mashallah. I want to start off by mentioning and reminding us all of Celebrate Mercy's mission statement. Our mission is to teach the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam his life and character through our words and actions to Muslims and friends of other faiths. Mashallah, inshallah, we have a very special program happening tomorrow night, Friday, April 5th, 6 to 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Eastern Time. We have the distinguished guests, the, the, the scholars that you see on your screen, inshallah, will be sharing their reflections uh, during this very special evening program. And we're in the final days of Ramadan. It's, it's a great opportunity to get inspired, to give ourselves that extra push that we need to do our ibadah, to give in charity, to spread love and spread um, uh, goodness in these last final moments of Ramadan, inshallah. So please do tune into that, inshallah, tomorrow evening. Also, do not forget Friday. It's the biggest prize day for our launch good. 27th of Ramadan, the first place prize will quadruple. That means $20,000 will be given from launch good, inshallah. So please do support uh, Celebrate Mercy through our launch good. Uh, through the campaign that's currently running. We're going to be touching upon that as we go through tonight's program. Uh, I do want to mention um, to all of you, uh, please let us know where you're tuning in from, inshallah. I, I always love seeing where people are watching from. And, uh, you know, send in your comments, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. May Allah bless you all tuning in from the Netherlands. Allah bless you. Thank you for tuning in. So far away. I'm currently sitting here in Connecticut, mashallah, uh, in the U.S. Uh, so yes, please do send in your comments and uh, let us know where you're tuning in from, mashallah, in New York. We have a we have someone from New York. Welcome. So if you're interested in the work that Celebrate Mercy is doing, and I think you are, if you're tuned into this program, right, if you're interested in where the donations will be going and how they will be utilized and the plans that uh, Celebrate Mercy has in store and a review of what Celebrate Mercy has done. You can tune into these smaller uh, webinars that will be happening. Um, you can take a look right at the middle there, Friday, April 5th, 11 a.m. ET Eastern Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Brief Ramadan presentations with Q&A with Celebrate Mercy's director and with the speakers that you see on your screen. So you can RSVP to that at celebratemercy.com forward slash review. It's a great opportunity to learn about the work that Celebrate Mercy has done and inshallah intends to do and how far those funds that are being raised through the launch good will go inshallah. Let's see where some people are tuning in from. Columbia, Missouri. Inshallah, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Falls Church, Virginia. We have, mashallah. Sister Diana, I've donated for the last 10 days. I'll love reward you. May Allah accept. MashaAllah. From Washington, D.C. MashaAllah. Ramadan Mubarak. Khair Mubarak. We have people tuning in from Ontario, Canada. MashaAllah. And from Utah. And from Virginia. MashaAllah. Welcome to everybody from Philly. Brother Lloyd, welcome. And from Jersey, mashallah. Welcome, everybody. So as you're tuning in, be sure to hit that notification bell, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share this link with your family and friends, with your loved ones, and share the goodness, inshallah, as you're tuning into this beautiful program. There are so many gems throughout these, these programs, throughout these reflections specifically, um, and I'm so glad you're here. Be sure to share the goodness, inshallah, and spread the word. Here's a quick snapshot of Celebrate Mercy since 2022. Celebrate, Celebrate Mercy um, 
their work over the past 24 months. 950 hours of new content, 15 kids programs with 18,200 children enro enrolled, 350,000 hours of content viewed, $872,000 raised for relief aid and scholarships, 680 webinars, and 10 social and solo wealth campaigns. And you can support our programs, Celebrate Mercy's programs, and help us share the message and the light and the beauty of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with people all over the world. Once again, launchgood.com forward slash CM. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Giving charity extinguishes sins, just as water extinguishes fire. And the best of charity is that given in Ramadan. If you're tuning in on YouTube, there's a donate button. You see that donate button that looks like a heart and two hands. Uh, you can click that and you can donate right from there and you can support Celebrate Mercy, the work that we're trying to do in this campaign that we're running throughout the month of Ramadan to set uh, forth you know, our intentions as we go towards the, the remainder of this year and into next year and the work that we're trying to do with the funds raised, inshallah. So please do support and hit that button. You go to the launch good and support there as well. Our launch good is currently at 61% of our Ramadan goal, $614,000. And our goal is $1 million. And that $1 million is going to go towards all the programming that we do. That, you know, that snapshot that you saw a couple slides ago, well, all those programs and all those hours put into spreading the light and, and the message of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's where it goes. And it goes to many initiatives as in addition to that, in-person program, online programs, um, programs for children and adults and, te and teens and tweens, really something for everybody. And it's and it's a beautiful initiative to be a part of. So I highly encourage you to donate uh, to the launch good so we can reach that goal and we can share the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam with the world. There are free gifts for supporters as well. And here's a quick overview of where those where where that the, that one million dollars will be allocated. Right, it's going to go to curriculum development, new content, which includes videos and courses, the Palestine Project, new publications, expanding the team, growing the endowment, and scholarships as well. So it's going to go a long way, and it, it's totally worth it. In these in these last nights of Ramadan, to donate and to be a part of such an amazing initiative that is going to, inshallah, do so much khair and so much good for the community. To really be a part of that, inshallah, you'll be rewarded abundantly. We have a Sira scholarship fund, which is zakat eligible. It's strictly used to facilitate prophetic learning, used to support tuition fees of zakat eligible seekers, used to send books sent to incarcerated Muslims. You can read more about how you can give your zakat to our scholarship fund at launchgood.com forward slash CM, and you can just scroll to the zakat section. If you're donating this Ramadan, there are certain gifts that you can qualify for as you increase your levels of donation. You know, we have the store gift cards, the prophetic sandal pin, the Lady Fatima leather book, prophetic art panel, the three-foot wooden sandal, uh, the holy moss carpets, Alexa olive oil, and lifetime membership and gift package. You can donate at launchgood.com forward slash CM once again. So at the $100 mark, you have the prophetic sandal. $500 donations, we have the gift of the biography of the Lady Fatima, the Alana, leather bound, mashallah. $1,000 donation, you have the artwork, the prophetic sandal, the pulpit of the and holy mosque, a beautiful piece of artwork. And another uh, beautiful piece of artwork, which is the handcrafted three-foot wooden sandal at the $2,500 donation mark. And at $5,000 donation, you have the carpets of the holy mosque. This is a piece of history. It's, it's a blessed thing to have in your home. It's a beautiful thing to have in your home, and you can get that at the $5,000 donation mark. And the $10,000 donation mark, you have... Uh, blessed olive oil from Al-Aqsa Groves in Jerusalem. And there's a limited quantity. So be sure to give. And if you can qualify for that, that's a beautiful thing to have. And then $20,000 donation, lifetime membership, and all the gifts that we just went over. MashaAllah. Today is a match day. And what that means is that we are donors are matching up to $30,000. If we get that $30,000, we will have a match. And that's going to be amazing. It's going to push us full. Uh, push us forward, catapult us forward towards reaching our goal for this Ramadan. So please give generously and please support uh, Celebrate Mercy. And you will uh, also get the gifts as well. Uh, it's, it's an amazing project to be a part of. 
So right now, I know that we are at just under $1,500 for our donations for the uh, 30K match. So slightly below that $3,000 mark there. But inshallah, I think, I believe that with everyone watching here, there's 76 people tuned in right now, 79. The number's going up. For everyone who's tuning in, give a little, give something in these final nights, and we can together reach our goals, inshallah. You can donate at launchgood.com forward slash CM, inshallah. And once again, you can just scan that QR code and you can donate there too. So if you're on your computer and you're watching on your computer, you can pull up your phone, scan that QR code and donate. So you're not, you know, switching over tabs and getting distracted by different things. You can simply do that on your phone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your support as a gift in honor of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here is an audience prompt. As you know, if, if you've been tuning in throughout this month, there's always something that we want to provide that allows you to think about, uh, you know, something to think about as we go through the Quran recitation and as we uh, engage with the scholars and take from them the lessons that they provide. For tonight, what does your relationship with your parents look like? Something to think about. And what is one dua you have when it comes to your parents or your relationship with them? Inshallah, at this time, I'd like to introduce Imam Nihal Khan. Imam Nihal Khan is trained as an Imam, chaplain, educator, and academic. He is the founder of the Academy, which serves as a platform to invite Muslim professionals to engage and learn about their faith, and where he will be teaching a cover to cover tafsir of the Quran in English after Ramadan. He is also the host of the Faith and Fine Print podcast and an Arabic teacher at Fawaka Institute. Previously, he studied a bachelor's in psychology from Montclair State University and then in Lucknow, India. Imam Nihal received an Alamiya degree in the Islamic sciences from Nadut al Ulama. After that, Imam Nihal graduated with a master's in religious studies from Harvard Seminary, during which time he also completed coursework at Harvard Divinity School. Since 2021, Imam Nihal has been living in Istanbul with his wife. There, between conducting private classes, he studied uh, the Islamic Rational Sciences at Dar al Funun Institute and Ibn Khaldun University. Feel free to connect with Imam Nihal on social media at Nihal201. And I just wanted to mention here before we bring him on that cover that you see there, that 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 image, study the Quran cover to cover, um, that is for Imam Nihal's uh, Maktab Academy. Be sure to, to check that out, and you can benefit from Imam Nihal. Uh, he's a very good, dear friend of mine that I've benefited from so much. And um, and I'm and I'm. It's always an honor to have him with us. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks, Salam. How's it going? Good. I'm glad. You changed the color today in the background. It's it's a little bit. It's like you know the last days of Ramadan. It's like you know calmer and have a different look and feel. Mashallah. Is is that a construction light in, in the back? This one? No, oh, the one, one behind you. No, it's like um. I guess it's like those old school. Studio lights. I don't know. I don't. Okay, I don't even okay. know what the correct term would be, but I thought it looked cool. So, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, right. I'll pass it to you, inshallah. Inshallah, Zakhla Khairan. Wait. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. We're going to be reciting the twenty-sixth just today, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حاميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز الحكيم ما خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما إلا بالحق وأجل مسمى والذين كفروا عما أنذروا معرضون قل أرأيتم ما تدعون من دون الله أروني ماذا خلقوا من الأرض أم لهم شرك في السماوات إيتوني بكتاب من قبل هذا أو أثارة من علم إن كنتم صادقين ومن أضل ممن يدعو من دون الله من لا يستجيب له إلى يوم القيامة 
وهم عن دعائهم غافلون وإذا حشر الناس كانوا لهم أعداء وكانوا بعبادتهم كافرين وإذا تتلى عليهم آياتنا بينات قال الذين كفروا للحق لما جاءهم هذا سحر مبين أم يقولون افتراه قل إن افتريته فلا تملكون لي من الله شيئا وأعلم بما تفيضون فيه كفى به شهيدا بيني وبينكم وهو الغفور الرحيم قل ما كنت بدعا من الرسل وما أدري ما يفعل بي ولا بكم إن أتبع إلا ما يوحى إلي وما أنا إلا نذير مبين قل أرأيتم إن كان من عند الله وكفرتم به وشهد شاهد من بني إسرائيل على مثله فآمن واستكبرتم إن الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين وقال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا لو كان خيرا ما سبقونا إليه وإذ لم يهتدوا به فسيقولون هذا إفك قديم ومن قبله كتاب موسى إماما ورحمة وهذا كتاب مصدق لسانا عربيا لينذر الذين ظلموا وبشرى للمحسنين إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون أولئك أصحاب الجنة خالدين فيها جزاء بما كانوا يعملون ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه إحسانا حملته أمه كرها ووضعته كرها وحمله وفصاله ثلاثون شهرا حتى إذا بلغ أشده وبلغ أربعين سنة قال رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين أولئك الذين نتقبل عنهم أحسن ما عملوا ونتجاوز عن سيئاتهم في أصحاب الجنة وعد الصدق الذي كانوا يوعدون والذي قال لوالديه أف لكما أتعدانني أن أخرج وقد خلت القرون من قبلي وهما يستغيثان الله ويلك آمن إن وعد الله حق فيقول ما هذا إلا أساطير الأولين أولئك الذين حق عليهم القول في أمم قد خلت من قبلهم من الجن والإنس إنهم كانوا خاسرين ولكل درجات مما عملوا وليوفيهم أعمالهم وهم لا يظلمون ويوم يعرض الذين كفروا على النار أذهبتم طيباتكم في حياتكم الدنيا واستمتعتم بها فاليوم تجزون عذاب الهون بما كنتم تستكبرون في الأرض بغير الحق وبما كنتم تفسقون واذكر أخا عاد إذ أنذر قومه بالأحقاف وقد خلت النذر من بين يديه ومن خلفه من بين يديه ومن خلفه ألا تعبدوا إلا الله إني أخاف عليكم عذاب يوم عظيم قالوا أجئتنا لتأفكنا عن آلهتنا فأتنا بما تعذنا إن كنت من الصادقين قال إنما العلم عند الله وأبلغكم ما أرسلت به إلى ما أرسلت به ولكني ولكني أراكم قوما تجهلون فلما رأوه عارضا مستقبل أوديتهم 
قالوا هذا عارض ممطرنا بل هو ما استعجلتم به ريح فيها عذاب أليم تدمر كل شيء بأمر ربها فأصبحوا لا يرى إلا مساكنهم كذلك كذلك نجزي القوم المجرمين ولقد مكناهم في في ماء مكناكم فيه وجعلنا لهم وجعلنا لهم سمعا وأبصارا وأفئدة وما فما أغنى عنهم سمعهم ولا أبصارهم ولا أفئدتهم ولا أفئدتهم من شيء إذ كانوا يجحدون بآيات الله وحاق بهم ما كانوا به يستهزئون ولقد أهلكنا ما حولكم من القرى وصرفنا الآيات لعلهم يرجعون فلولا نصرهم الذين اتخذوا من دون الله قربانا آلهة بل ضلوا عنهم وذلك إفكهم وما كانوا يفترون وإذ صرفنا إليك نفرا من الجن يستمعون القرآن فلما حضروه قالوا أنصتوا فلما قضي ولوا إلى قومهم منذرين قالوا يا قومنا إنا سمعنا كتابا أنزل من بعد موسى أنزل من بعد موسى مصدقا لما بين يديه يهدي إلى الحق وإلى طريق مستقيم يا قومنا أجيبوا داعي الله وآمنوا به يغفر لكم من ذنوبكم ويجركم من عذاب أليم ومن لا يجب داعي الله فليس بمعجز في الأرض وليس له من دونه أولياء أولئك في ضلال مبين أولم يروا أن الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض ولم يعي بخلقهن بقادر على أن يحيي الموتى بلى إنه على كل شيء قدير ويوم يعرض الذين كفروا على النار أليس هذا بالحق قالوا بلى وربنا قال فذوقوا العذاب بما كنتم تكفرون فاصبر كما صبر أولو العزم من الرسل ولا تستعجل لهم كأنهم يوم يرون ما يوعدون لم يلبثوا إلا ساعة من النهار بلاغ فهل يهلك إلا القوم الفاسقون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين كفروا وصدوا عن سبيل الله أضل أعمالهم والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وآمنوا بما نزل على محمد وهو الحق من ربهم كفر عنهم سيئاتهم وأصلح بالهم ذلك بأن الذين كفروا اتبعوا الباطل وأن الذين آمنوا اتبعوا الحق من ربهم كذلك يضرب الله للناس أمثالهم فإذا لقيتم الذين كفروا فضرب الرقاب حتى إذا أثخنتموهم فشدوا الوثاق فإما من بعد وإما فداء حتى تضع الحرب أوزارها ذلك ولو يشاء الله لن تصر منهم ولكن ليبلو بعضكم ببعض والذين قتلوا في سبيل الله فلن يضل أعمالهم سيهديهم ويصلح بالهم ويدخلهم الجنة عرفها لهم 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تنصروا الله ينصركم ويثبت أقدامكم والذين كفروا فتعسل لهم وأضل أعمالهم ذلك بأنهم كرهوا ما أنزل الله فأحبط أعمالهم فلم يسيروا في الأرض فينظروا كيف كان عاقبة الذين من قبلهم دمر الله عليهم وللكافرين أمثالها ذلك بأن الله مولى الذين آمنوا وأن الكافرين لا مولى لهم إن الله يدخل الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار والذين كفروا يتمتعون ويأكلون كما تأكل الأنعام والنار مثوى لهم وكأي من قرية هي أشد قوة من قريتك التي أخرجتك أهلكناهم فلا ناصر لهم أفمن كان على بينة من ربه كمن زين له سوء عمله واتبعوا أهواءهم مثل الجنة رون فرس 15 مثل الجنة التي بعد المتقون فيها أنهار من ماء غير آس وأنهار من لبن لم يتغير طعمه وأنهار من خمر لذة للشاربين وأنهار من عسل مصفى من كل الثمرات ومغفرة من ربهم كمن هو خالد في النار وسقوا ماء حميما فقطع أمعاءهم ومنهم من يستمع إليك حتى إذا خرجوا من عندك قالوا للذين أوتوا العلم ماذا قال آنفا أولئك الذين طبع الله على قلوبهم واتبعوا أهواءهم والذين اهتدوا زادهم هدى وآتاهم تقواهم فهل ينظرون إلا الساعة أن تأتيهم بغتة فقد جاء أشراطها فأنا لهم إذا جاءتهم ذكراهم فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والله يعلم متقلبكم ومثواكم ويقول الذين آمنوا لولا نزلت سورة فإذا أنزلت سورة محكمة وذكر فيها القتال رأيت الذين في قلوبهم مرض ينظرون إليك ينظرون إليك نظر المغشي عليه من الموت فأولى لهم طاعة وقول معروف فإذا عزم الأمر فلو صدقوا الله لكان خيرا لهم فهل عسيتم إن توليتم أن تفسدوا في الأرض وتقطعوا أرحامكم؟ أولئك الذين لعنهم الله فأصمهم وأعمى أبصارهم أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها إن الذين ارتدوا إن الذين ارتدوا على أدبارهم من بعد ما تبين له الهدى 
من بعد ما تبين له الهدى الشيطان سول لهم وأملا لهم ذلك بأنهم قالوا للذين كرهوا ما نزل الله سنطيعكم في بعض الأمر والله يعلم إسرارهم فكيف إذا توفتهم الملائكة يضربون وجوههم وأدبارهم ذلك بأنهم اتبعوا ما أسخط الله وكرهوا رضوانه فأحبط أعمالهم أم حسب الذين أم حسب الذين في قلوبهم مرض أن لن يخرج الله أضغانهم ولو نشاء لنا ولو نشاء لأريناكهم فلعرفتهم بسيماهم ولتعرفنهم في لحن القول والله يعلم أعمالكم ولنبلونكم حتى نعلم المجاهدين منكم والصابرين ونبلو أخباركم إن الذين كفروا وصدوا عن سبيل الله وشاقوا الرسول من بعد ما تبين له الهدى ما تبين لهم الهدى لن يضر الله شيئا وسيحبط أعمالهم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول ولا تبطلوا أعمالكم إن الذين كفروا وصدوا عن سبيل الله ثم ماتوا وهم كفار فلن يغفر الله لهم فلا تهنوا وتدعوا إلى السلم وأنتم الأعلون والله معكم ولن يتركم أعمالكم إنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وإن تؤمنوا وتتقوا يؤتكم أجوركم ولا يسألكم أموالكم إن يسألكموها فيحفكم تبخلوا ويخرج أضغانكم ها أنتم هؤلاء تدعون لتنفقوا لتنفقوا في سبيل الله فمنكم من يبخل ومن يبخل فإنما يبخل عن نفسه والله الغني وأنتم الفقراء وإن تتولوا يستبدل قوما غيركم ثم لا يكونوا أمثالكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا والذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين ليزدادوا ليزدادوا إيمانا مع إيمانهم ولله جنود السماوات والأرض وكان الله عليما حكيما ليدخل المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها ويكفر عنهم سيئاتهم وكان ذلك عند الله فوزا عظيما ويعذب المنافقين والمنافقات والمشركين والمشركات والمشركات الظانين بالله ظن السوء عليهم دائرة السوء وغضب الله عليهم ولعنهم وأعد لهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا ولله جنود السماوات والأرض وكان الله عزيزا حكيما 
إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله وتعزروه وتوقروه وتسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا إن الذين يبايعونك إنما يبايعون الله يد الله فوق أيديهم فمن نكث فإنما ينكث على نفسه ومن أوفى بما عاهد عليه الله فسيؤتيه أجرا عظيما سيقول سيقول لك المخلفون من الأعراب شغلتنا أموالنا وأهلنا فاستغفر لنا يقولون بألسنتهم ما ليس في قلوبهم قل فمن يملك لكم من الله شيئا إن أراد بكم ضرا أو أراد بكم نفعا بل كان الله بما تعملون خبيرا بل ظننتم أن لن ينقلب الرسول والمؤمنون إلى أهليهم أبدا وزين ذلك في قلوبكم وظننتم ظن السوء وكنتم قوما بورا ومن لم يؤمن بالله ورسوله فإنا أعتدنا للكافرين سعيرا ولله ملك السماوات والأرض يغفر لمن يشاء ويعذب من يشاء وكان الله غفورا رحيما سيقول المخلفون إذا طلبتم إذا طلقتم إلى مغانم لتأخذوا هذا رونا نتبعكم يريدون أن يبدلوا كلام الله قل لن تتبعونا كذلكم قال الله من قبل فسيقولون بل تحسدوننا بل كانوا لا يفقهون إلا قليلا قل للمخلفين من الأعراب ستدعون إلى قوم أولي بأس شديد تقاتلونهم أو يسلمون فإن تطيعوا يؤتكم الله أجرا حسنا وإن تتولوا كما توليتم من قبل يعذبكم عذابا أليما ليس على الأعمى حرج ولا على الأعرج حرج ولا على المريض حرج ومن يطع الله ورسوله يدخله جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ومن يتولى يعذبه عذابا أليما لقد رضي الله عن المؤمنين إذ يبايعونك تحت الشجرة فعلم ما في قلوبهم فأنزل السكينة عليهم وأثابهم فتحا قريبا ومغانم كثيرة يأخذونها وكان الله عزيزا حكيما وعدكم الله مغانم كثيرة تأخذونها فعجل لكم هذه وكف أيدي الناس عنكم ولتكون آية للمؤمنين ويهديكم صراطا مستقيما وأخرى لم تقدروا عليها قد أحاط الله بها وكان الله على كل شيء قديرا ولو قاتلكم الذين كفروا لولوا الأدبار ثم لا يجدون لوليا ولا نصيرا سنة الله التي قد خلت من قبل ولن تجد لسنة الله تبديلا وهو الذي كف أيديهم عنكم وأيديكم عنهم ببطن مكة من بعد أن أظفركم عليهم وكان الله بما تعملون بصيرا هم الذين كفروا وصدوكم عن المسجد الحرام والهدي معكوفا أن يبلغ محلة ولولا رجال مؤمنون ونساء مؤمنات لم تعلموا لم تعلموهم أن تطعوك 
أن تطعوهم فتصيبكم منهم معرة بغير علم ليدخل الله في رحمته من يشاء لو تزيلوا لعذبنا الذين كفروا منهم عذابا أليما إذ جعل الذين كفروا في قلوبهم الحمية حمية الجاهلية فأنزل الله سكينته على رسوله وعلى المؤمنين وألزمهم كلمة التقوى وكانوا أحق بها وأهلها وكان الله بكل شيء عليما لقد صدقكم الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق لتدخلن المسجد الحرام إن شاء الله إن شاء الله آمنين محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين لا تخافون فعلم ما لم تعلموا فجعل من دون ذلك فتحا قريبا هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في الإنجيل كزرع أخرج شطأه فآزره فاستغلظ فاستوى على سوقه يعجب الزراع ليغيظ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله إن الله سميع عليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون إن الذين يغضون أصواتهم عند رسول الله أولئك الذين امتحن الله قلوبهم للتقوى لهم مغفرة وأجر عظيم إن الذين ينادونك من وراء الحجرات أكثرهم لا يعقلون ولو أنهم صبروا حتى تخرج إليهم لكان خيرا لهم والله غفور رحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبينوا فتبينوا أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين واعلموا أن فيكم رسول الله لو يطيعكم في كثير من الأمر لعنتم ولكن الله حبب إليكم الإيمان وزينه في قلوبكم وكره إليكم الكفر والفسوق والعصيان أولئك هم الراشدون فضلا من الله ونعمة والله عليم حكيم وإن طائفتان من المؤمنين اقتتلوا فأصلحوا بينهما فإن بغت إحداهما على الأخرى فقاتلوا التي فقاتلوا التي تبغي حتى تفيء إلى أمر الله 
فإن فاءت فأصلحوا بينهما بالعدل وأقسطوا إن الله يحب المقسطين إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهن ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الإيمان ومن لم يتب فأولئك هم الظالمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض الظن إثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أن يحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله إن الله تواب رحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا أو قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولما يدخل الإيمان في قلوبكم وإن تطيعوا الله ورسوله لا يلتكم من أعمالكم شيئا إن الله غفور رحيم إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم في سبيل الله أولئك هم الصادقون قل أتعلمون الله بدينكم والله يعلم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض والله بكل شيء عليم يمنون عليك أن أسلموا قل لا تمنوا علي إسلامكم بل الله يمن عليكم أن هداكم للإيمان إن كنتم صادقين إن الله يعلم غيب السماوات والأرض والله بصير بما تعملون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قاف والقرآن المجيد بل عجبوا أن جاءهم منذر منهم فقال الكافرون هذا شيء عجيب أإذا متنا وكنا ترابا ذلك رجع بعيد قد علمنا ما تنقص الأرض منهم وعندنا كتاب حفيظ بل كذبوا بالحق لما جاءهم فهم في أمر مريج أفلم ينظروا إلى السماء فوقهم كيف بنيناها وزيناها وما لها من فروج والأرض مددناها وألقينا فيها رواسي وأنبتنا فيها من كل زوج بهيج تبصرة وذكرى لكل عبد منيب ونزلنا من السماء ماء مباركا فأنبتنا به جنات وحب الحصيد والنخل باسقات لها طلع نضيد رزقا للعباد وأحيينا به بلدة ميتا كذلك الخروج كذبت قبلهم قوم نوح وأصحاب الرس وثمود وعاد وفرعون وإخوان لوط وأصحاب الأيكة وقوم تبع كل كذب الرسل فحق وعيد أفعينا بالخلق الأول بل هم في لبس من خلق جديد 
وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنْسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ إِذْ يَتَلَقَّى الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدٌ مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٌ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدِ وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ وَلَقَدْ لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ أَلْقِيَا فِي جَهَنَّمَ كُلَّ كَفَّارٍ عَنِيدٌ مَنَّاعٍ لِلْخَيْرِ مُعْتَدٍ مُرِيبٍ الَّذِي جَعَلَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ فَأَلْقِيَاهُ فِي الْعَذَابِ الشَّدِيدِ قَالَ قَرِينُهُ رَبَّنَا مَا أَطْغَيْتُهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانَ فِي ضَلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ قَالَ لَا تَخْتَصِمُوا لَدَيَّ وَقَدْ قَدَّمْتُ إِلَيْكُمْ بِالْوَعِيدِ مَا يُبَدَّلُ الْقَوْلُ لَدَيَّ وَمَا أَنَا بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمَ هَلِ امْتَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ هَذَا هَذَا مَا تُوعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَنَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ وَدَخُلُوهَا بِسَلَامٍ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُلُودِ لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٍ وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ هُمْ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ بَطَشًا فَنَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ هَلْ مِنْ مَحِيصٍ إن في ذلك لذكرى لمن كان له قلب أو ألقى السمع وهو شهيد ولقد خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما في ستة أيام وما مسنا من لغوب فاصبر على ما يقولون وسبح بحمد ربك قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل الغروب ومن الليل فسبح وأدبار السجود واستمع يوم ينادي المناد من مكان قريب يوم يسمعون الصيحة بالحق ذلك يوم الخروج إنا نحن نحيي ونميت وإلينا المصير يوم تشقق الأرض عنهم سراعا ذلك حشر علينا يسير نحن أعلم بما يقولون وما أنت عليهم بجبار فذكر بالقرآن من يخاف وعيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذاريات ذروا فالحاملات وقرا فالجاريات يسرا فالمقسمات أمرا إنما توعدون لصادق وإن الدين لواقع والسماء ذات الحبك إنكم لفي قول مختلف يؤفك عنه من أفك قتل الخراسون الذين هم في غمرة ساهون يسألون أيان يوم الدين يوم هم على النار يفتنون ذوقوا فتنتكم هذا الذي كنتم به تستعجلون إن المتقين في جنات وعيون آخذين ما آتاهم ربهم إنهم كانوا قبل ذلك محسنين كانوا قليلا من الليل ما يهجعون وبالأسحارهم وبالأسحار هم يستغفرون وفي أموالهم حق للسائل والمحروم وفي الأرض آيات للموقنين وفي أنفسكم أفلا تبصرون 
وفي السماء رزقكم وما توعدون فورب السماوات فورب السماء والأرض إنه لحق مثل ما أنكم تنطقون هل أتاك حديث ضيف إبراهيم المكرمين إذ دخلوا عليه فقالوا سلاما قال سلام قوم منكرون فراغ إلى أهله فجاء بعجل سميم فقربه إليهم قال ألا تأكلون فأوجس منهم خيفة قالوا لا تخف وبشروه بغلام عليم فأقبلت امرأته في صرة فصكت وجهها وقالت عجوز عقيم قالوا كذلك قال ربك إنه هو الحكيم العليم صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله جزاك الله خير إمام نهال I think we had some uh, some technical difficulties there with some of the verses, but I think we caught up. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. All right. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Assalamu alaikum. All right. Thanks for now. Brothers and sisters, hope you enjoyed the beautiful recitation by Imam Nihal Khan. MashaAllah. It was, uh, it was amazing. It's always amazing to listen to the Quran, to have the ability to hear it and to reflect upon it. Returning back to some announcements, inshallah, before our next speaker. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless today's webinar sponsor. Uh, this sponsor um, has sponsored multiple webinars throughout this uh, blessed month, and they've been very generous. Their dua reads, Ya Rabbi, Ya Jabbar, Ya Shafi, mend our families and our ummah and heal us perfectly. Give us the best of this world and the hereafter. Amin. And a message from the family reads, Our daughter was diagnosed with depression and anxiety and recently attempted suicide. Alhamdulillah, she feels better now. Please keep us in your du'as. May this family be elevated. May they find peace. May they find tranquility. May they be rewarded abundantly for their sacrifices, for their uh, for the for the goodness that they're um, contributing towards. And I ask all of you who are watching this to keep this family in your prayers and your du'as and keep uh, their daughter in your du'as as well. And may Allah SWT, uh, ease uh, any pain and hardship for them and for all of the people um, in the world who may be going through similar difficulties, inshallah. And just as a reminder for those who sponsor these webinars, the sponsored slides are shown at least twice during a webinar to thousands who view the live shows and recordings. You can sponsor a webinar. Inshallah, you can um, sponsor these by going to celebratemercy.org forward slash sponsor. You know, they're viewed by thousands daily and your dua can be shared on each webinar. And this can serve as a Sadiq Ajariya for you or a loved one who has passed as well. And once again, this announcement about tomorrow's program, uh, April 5th, 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with the amazing scholars you see on your screen there. It's going to be a very blessed, very beautiful night, uh, something that will inspire us to give our night, our evening, our worship, give it our all, inshallah, and inspire us to be the best we can be in these final nights of Ramadan um, and, and push forth, inshallah. So you can RSVP at celebratemercy.org forward slash night 27. And of course, for the sessions that we have here, these reflections, please do send in your questions. Um, send in your questions and your comments. Uh, we always love to hear from you. And you can email us anonymously at questions at celebratemercy.com. At this time, I'd like to introduce Sheikh Hisham. One second here. Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud has studied theology, hadith, legal theory, jurisprudence, ethics, Quran recitation, and Arabic with scholars in Morocco, Mauritania, and Egypt. He has taught for more than a decade at Yale, Princeton, and Harvard, but then left the academy to institute Lanterna, an educational initiative that intends to establish learning collectives to carry forward the legacies of our greatest luminaries. 
He continues to read with scholars and students in the United States and abroad. At this time, I'd like to bring to the stage Sheikh Hisham. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu How are you doing this evening? Good, alhamdulillah. All is well with you, alhamdulillah. I like the background, mashallah, I like the effects. Thank you, thank you. How, oh, how's everything with you? How are lighting you? Lighting is perfect, mashallah. Mm. Alhamdulillah, things are well. Uh, we have uh, one week here left in uh, Ramadan, and so we're going to push, inshallah. We end Ramadan strong, inshallah. I mean. Inshallah, and your reflections always inspire us to give it our all, give it our best, inshallah. So thank you for uh, being with us, and I'll let you take it away with your reflections, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 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 بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى من ولا الله سبحانه وتعالى says in his majestic book أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها do they not reflect deeply on the Quran do they not celebrate the Quran or is it that some hearts are under their class blocks we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free our hearts that we may soar in the divine meanings of his book and that he never deprive us uh, the layers of meaning to his book that would inspire us to um, to journey onward toward him and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So our first passage of the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujarat, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday Allahi wa rasulih wa attaqu Allah inna Allah sami'un alim. O faithful, O faithful, do not proceed in any matter before a decree from Allah and His Messenger, and fear Allah. Surely Allah is all hearing, all knowing. In this verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "La tuqaddimu bayna yaday Allahi wa Rasulih," that uh, um, do not uh, um, do not proceed in any matter before a decree from Allah and His Messenger. This is very beautiful. It's uh, it, it, the 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 injunction here is upon us to be patient and to wait for Allah and His Messenger to adjudicate or to legislate in a matter before taking matters into our own hands. And it speaks to uh, the um, disposition that is required of the faithful uh, to be ready to act once we have certainty in the act, once we have certainty in the act to act, and not to be hasteful, not to be rash, and not to act out of turn. Uh, the Messenger of Allah himself uh, exemplifies this uh, in several points in the, in the seerah in the, with several things that he desired that uh, he, he shied away from asking until the permission came. Uh, case in point, the hijrah itself. The Prophet knew from the time that Waraka ibn Nawfal told him that you are the messenger to the to to the, the, your people, and that the the spirit who descended upon you was the same who descended upon Musa alayhi salam, and I wish I were young again, I would support you the day that your people banish you. So the Prophet knew from that moment he knew that he would be banished from the city. He knew that migration was imminent. Um, and yet 13 years of suffering and persecution and uh, and the the oppression of the the the, the Meccans 13 years they endured that and the prophet sallallahu could have sped that up by just asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya allah allow me to migrate and this is after seeing babies who were starving to death buried right this is after uh, losing uh, close companions to him who were literally murdered 
And the Prophet ﷺ still waited for the permission to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Allah's time. Atta amrullahi falata stajilu. The command of Allah, the decree of Allah has already come to pass. So do not hasten it. And so we find in the Prophet ﷺ, he never asked for something that he knew was going to come. He didn't ask for it. He just waited for it uh, until it came, right? The Qibla is another example of that. The Prophet ﷺ wanted to, that the Qibla be changed. And yet he shied away from asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knew that it was a matter of time and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in due time would bring this to him. And so he waited for the decree. And so this is a very important lesson for us to learn as believers to know that the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near and we should not act rashly. We should, we should be in a state where we are awaiting the decree to come when it comes inshallah and this is in things that are certain uh, uh, and 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 uh, and promised uh, and so the next verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti an-nabi wa la tajahru lahu bil qawl ka jahri ba'dikum li ba'din an tahbata a'malukum wa antum la tash'urun o faithful uh, do not raise your voices above the voice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Raise not your voices above the voice of the Prophet nor speak loudly to him, nor address him loudly as you address one another, uh, or your deeds, lest your deeds become nullified, and while you are while you uh, are, are unaware, right, your deeds could become nullified while you are while you are unaware. Allah Akbar. This verse was revealed um, on the occasion of. A, of a verbal exchange, not even an argument, but a verbal exchange between none other than Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar uh, in which Sayyidina Abu Bakr anhu had a certain opinion, Sayyidina Umar anhu had an alternative opinion, a, a, a contrary opinion, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr told Sayyidina Umar, you only meant to differ with me. And Sayyidina Umar anhu responded saying, I didn't mean to differ with you. Ma aratta illa khilafi ya Umar. Ma aratu khilafaka ya Abu Bakr. That was it. That was it. And that was in the presence of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Upon that, the verse comes down. O faithful, addressing Abu Bakr and Umar, and addressing all of us through them. O faithful, raise not your voices in the presence of the Messenger of Allah. Raise not your voices above that of the Messenger of Allah. Uh, nor address one another, uh, uh, nor address the Prophet in uh, uh, as you address one another, right? Nor speak loudly to him as you address one another, lest your deeds become nullified while you are yet unaware. The deeds of whom? The deeds of Abu Bakr, the deeds of Umar. All of their deeds, all those 13 years we just talked about in Mecca, all of that nullified. All of that nullified, and and the deeds in in Medina, all of those deeds nullified, because their voices were raised above that of the Prophet sallallahu and in his presence. Right now, uh, this is said about them. Right, what about us? What about us? Who you know the 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 basically it's the comment section, right? That's just like it's on blast. In every on every platform, whether it's uh, whether it's Facebook or you you have it right, we become we become monsters online, monsters, utter monsters, and we forget that we are in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Does not Allah subhanahu wa taala say, "Wa'lamu anna fiqum Rasulullah"? Know that the Messenger of Allah is within you. He is within. Know that the Messenger of Allah is within, right? And nafikum Rasulullah. He is in you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala could have said bainakum, that He is among you, and He said fikum, right? Fikum, which is among you, but it's also it's got this other deeper meaning that He is within. He is within. And so we must not raise our voices above his. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Ma kana sahaban. He was not one to raise his voice. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And so the, 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 this 
you know, it is not from the characteristics of a Muslim that he should raise his voice because he is in the presence of a messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in every aspect of his life and in every moment of his life rasulullah is there guiding us by the hand if we only take his 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 hand or we can follow this raggedy old nafs and we know exactly where that leads Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Hisham, for those beautiful reflections. Um, I see that Asada Hasai has joined. Um, so I'd like to bring her to the stage, and I'll do a formal introduction before her reflection, inshallah. But I'd like to bring her to the stage now to um, to comment back on, on your reflections, inshallah. As-salamu alaykum, Asada. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salamu alaykum. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah wa shukurullah. Thank you. How are you, Sheikh Hisham? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I really like the background there, mashallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I just randomly found it the other day. I can send you the file. Um, <laughs> I just did a random Google search, and subhanAllah, this one came up. So Yeah, yeah. That, that's really that's really awesome, mashallah. It's beautiful. It, it looks like you're at Celebrate Mercy headquarters or something. <laughs> it, it does. I was just about to say something about the logo, right? I'm just like, mashallah. That's true. Yeah, you know, that's funny. I didn't make the connection. It reminded me more like of a mimbar, but you're right. It looks like the top of the na'lein. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a mihrab, exactly. I mean, like you're in your prayer niche, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're, alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. It's a very, um, you know, we have 10 days left here, or seven days. How many days do we have left here? Oh, today. Well, it depends on when you started. For us, it's the 25th, subhanAllah, tonight. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. No, I'm with you guys. You know, you know, <laughs> you know how we roll. <laughs> you know how we roll. Mashallah. <laughs> you can share the website if you want. Crescentwatch.org, basically. Exactly. <laughs> just, just make it plain, right? <laughs> no, mashallah. I just wanted to thank you for your um your reflections. A really important reminder, uh, especially you know, it's similar to you know what we discussed the other night actually, you know about just making sure that people stay in their respective lanes. And that applies to all of us, you know, wherever we are and to never act without knowledge, you know, essentially to not, uh, to make sure that we're informed in our decisions and that we don't proceed the, uh, you know, what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet have, have given us in terms of uh, commandments, injunctions, and make sure that we're informed. I feel like, uh, you know, we're just living in a time of immense, immense confusion. And you see people committing to, acts that are not found in the tradition but maybe because you know they heard it from someone or you know somewhere someone told them especially i think with regards to like duas you know being answered or specific prayers you know for specific things some people who really want certain outcomes they start to almost like a, a way of superstition you know believe that if they do this that you know without any foundation there's no um, citation of where where is this where did you find this and then we know that you know new age ideas have unfortunately crept in to the community. People are relying now on things like I had someone recently um, send me a message about manifestation, you know, and I was like, "What is this? Why are, are Muslims now turning to these occult concepts, you know, of of uh, you know vision boarding and, and the secret and trying to like, you know, bring like in bring in uh, the decree of Allah through these means, not through dua, not through other ways, but more things that they, uh, you know, deem to have some sort of magical powers or what have yeah, you. Psychedelics and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, it's really tragic, but the youth are, are very much caught up in, in these kinds of things. All the so really beautiful reminders, just like Mohirin. As always, mashallah. No, nice. And alhamdulillah. This the Surah Al Hujurat, right? The first few verses of Surah Al Hujurat. It's a it's just like a, it's a training camp, right? There's so much in terms of communal adab, that uh, communal etiquette that is imparted in the beginning of this surah. Absolutely, and, absolutely. You know, we, only, we were only able to to just touch upon two verses, but but the rest of the passage is uh, it reads like that. Yeah. Right, mashallah. I'm going to be sharing some reflections as well in, the, in my second reflection. From Surah al Fajrat. So I agree. Uh, I mean, uh, on this passage, on the same passage? No, no, no. Uh, it's yeah. on, uh, I, I, don't, I actually don't remember what ayah you read from, but it's it's exactly. One and two. I only got to one and two. 
Oh, mashallah. Okay, I, I skipped down to 10. and if, Well, I, you'll see. There are a few. I, I don't know if I'll have time to go through all of them, but like you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only had time for two. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we yeah. could spend all night just on, you know, on, on these verses, subhanAllah. There's just so much there, mashallah. Yeah, the bismillah. Let me get off. Yeah. Actually, uh, well, yeah. okay, sorry. There's a question that came from the audience that, that was okay. related to the reflection that we just had. It says, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. And tonight's amazing teachers, uh, Assalamu alaikum to the teachers. My question is, does Allah expect us to forget someone's hurtful pattern of behavior and its impact on our well-being? What about our self-respect? And I think this is going back to raising our voices or perhaps reactions to the way that people have hurt us. No, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, please do answer this. Mashallah, you do a much better job. But um, if, if you wouldn't mind, uh, um, could you please put, put the picture, I mean, the question up? Thank you. Um, don't forget us to forget someone's horrible pattern. I'm behind. So, you know, I think it's, it's a very important question because I think it is confusing for some people on where to draw the line with what's acceptable behavior, what's crossing the line. Can we, are we permitted to have boundaries? You know, uh, should we subject ourselves to abuses? Uh, all of these questions are valid questions. And I think, you know, obviously we're not, we're not, we're never expected to subject ourselves to abuses, um, especially if we feel that it is harmful to us. But as we know, people of different temperaments can endure different things. And if you're in a place in your life where you have a thick skin and it kind of rolls right off of you because you're able to make excuses, you're able to see that that person, you know, like they say, hurt people, hurt people. You're able to be a little bit more understanding of, of maybe that they're not trying to hurt you, but they don't know any better. As we know, a lot of these behaviors are learned behaviors. But if you've done enough spiritual work or just reading into you know, different uh, experiences and especially the Sira. I mean, you'll see time and time again, the Prophet said, um, people would come and, you know, they would, I mean, handle him, you know, roughly, they would speak to him roughly, but he always maintained his composure. And so I think for, as we're growing in our understanding and growing in our path, I think it's, we should try to embody as much of those beautiful prophetic, prophetic virtues as we can, but that takes a lot of discipline and work on the soul. You know, virtues like courage and justice and temperance, if uh, all of these come with, um, with pra practice. So I would say based on where you are, you should allow yourself time to, uh, to grow in that type of strength before you, you know, take on something like that. Cause I know that sometimes, especially with converts or, or people, you know, who are maybe new on the path, it sounds like a lot, you know, to suddenly be this person who's just, you know, enduring all of, uh, you know, insults or, or whatever it is from other people. It seems like a lot. It seems too much to ask. And it might be for those people, just like it might be for young children. You know, they have to grow that that toughness, that um, that resilience to those types of things. So with practice, I think it'll come. But if you feel like you can't and it's weighing on your mental health to be around people like that, then you're, of course, permitted to create some boundaries, but respectfully, you know, we have to, we can't uh, give in to what this culture promotes, which is cutting people off just because they are, and you know, even labels like, oh, they're toxic. And I mean, subhanAllah, I was going to speak about that actually in my second reflection about this really dangerous um, notion that just because a person, uh, you know, is maybe a little difficult and they have difficult, you know, personalities that you can label them and then that's it, do away with them. They're disposable. This is really outside of our faith tradition. We don't, uh, we don't treat people like that. We try to have, uh, you know, compassion and mercy and try to be magnanimous and largesse and, and present all these, you know, really beautiful prophetic virtues, again, depending on where we're at. But if you can't do that yet, then you can retreat and respectfully create boundaries without having to do this big sort of, you know, I'm done with you and I don't want to have anything to do with you. We don't need to fall into that kind of melodrama. Just, you know, go and do what you need to do and make the offer that, make the offer their guidance. We talked, you know, the other night about wanting good for Eve, for even, you know, evil, um, you know, people or, or, you know, anyone who's, who's harming others, we should want their guidance. Similarly, if, uh, if you have a family member or someone in your life who 
is uh, maybe verbally abusive, emotionally abusive, and that's the pattern that they've accustomed to, should really try to um, you know, make the offer them, but absolutely take care of your mental well-being and spiritual well-being if you need to. I think I, I can keep going, but I'll stop here because once I get, you know, it's like one, one thought leads to another thought leads to another thought, and we're just going to spend the whole night on this question, so I'll, I'll stop. But Jerishan, please enlighten us. I'm really looking forward to your com your uh, reflection, uh, especially what you said about the you know toxic and what. I mean, this is one of the rules of thumb. A friend of mine introduced this to me. He said, you know, one of the rules of thumb to know whether or not a category is actually valid, <laughs> mm -hmm. right, is translate it back into Arabic and see if it <laughs> see if it makes sense. That's right. That's actually a really good good. Yeah. Uh, of thumb i like that a lot that's great yeah. so i mean it's like because if you use the word in arabic it's like well, wait a minute this doesn't uh, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't yeah because we we derive our fiqh from arabic we derive our understanding we derive our categories all from the discourses of the scholars mm -hmm. right and so when you have the ideologues introducing nomenclature uh into our vocabulary uh, this, this is when you this is when it uh, i mean that that's what's truly toxic Right. So, and then, and then we base, and then we base our judgments on those categories that were not there just, you know, five minutes ago. You know, 100%. So, well, it's a yeah. lens, right? It's it's the lens with which you see things. So, like you said, if you're going to use language that is not rooted in our tradition and comes from an atheistic, uh, nihilistic, secular, often you know, postmodern worldview that's completely divorced of anything real and true. Uh, and and adopt that language or adopt that that mindset that it's going to inform the way you look at everything in your life and that's actually as you know one of their one of their schemes and tactics is purposeful it's purposeful to introduce language and to destabilize language and meanings in order to confuse people's perceptions of things that are that have been long-standing traditions found in across every culture every civilization just normal norms human norms that um, that have transcended culture and religion, they want to destabilize that. So that's why introducing all of these words and, and terms that are not, uh, that have never been uh, used before is definitely part of their agenda. Yeah, for sure. And a wise man once said, uh, um, <laughs> all right, that's all right. All right. I you need to start finding the, the citing the names of these wise people. I think we really want to know who these incredible. I was so good. I was going to deliver it with a straight face, man. I was, I was, I was. You know. You crack as soon as you say it. You have to watch the replay. You give yourself away. You got to practice. I didn't crack. That was a like that was. A, I mean, it was. Oh man, I, I worked my way up for it. Like I had, I, I did all the mental gymnastics to, to make sure I, I, I entered in like a surgeon, right? And um, you, yeah. you have a, you do this little smile that immediately <laughs> gives it away. I'm telling you, go back and watch the replay, and you'll see I'll why. Go, I'll, <laughs> I'll take your word for it, but yeah. But please tell us what this yeah. sagely wise man said. <laughs> um. Yeah, every ism mm -hmm. is a prism of a mind in prison. Wow, I yeah. like that. That's really good. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, I like that one. Every ism is a prism of a mind in pr in a prison. In prison. In prison. In pri oh, imprisoned. Yeah. Prison. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Very wise. Very wise of this. Very wise. Yeah. Very wise. Shall I you'll meet that guy one day? <laughs> Inshallah. I have to thank him. He's, he's got quite a few gems that he's imparted here through you, of course. Yeah, we just, you know. You just channel him. It's amazing how you do parrot. that. We just parrot. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get off here. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much for your reflections um, to the both of you. Uh, it's a very important question that was asked, uh, and, and I really. Love the responses, and I'm looking forward to hearing from more from you, Ustad Asai. So we're going to take a quick break to have some announcements, inshallah, and then I will introduce you, and we'll have uh, your reflections, inshallah. Great. Jazakallah. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Brothers and sisters, 
I hope you're enjoying the program. Today is a match day, which means that donors are matching up to $30,000. So we're trying to reach a goal of $30,000. And that is the goal for Friday. Currently, I just got the number we are at. So as you know, we started at around $1,000 earlier in the program. And now, mashallah, it went up again. So we are at $4,000. So we're right above that $3,000 mark, mashallah. So um, please do donate and give generously um, in these final nights of Ramadan to support Celebrate Mercy and the work that we are doing, the work that Celebrate Mercy is aiming to do, the programs they're trying to put together, and the aims that they have to spread the light and the love and the message of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the best of all creation. I want to return back to the audience prompt. What does your relationship with your parents look like? Inshallah, we have uh, some comments here. My relationship with my mother is strong, but my father has caused me much pain. I forgive for the faith. <clears throat> excuse me. I forgive for the sake of Allah. Just wish my heart felt the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant your heart ease and may he make your affairs easier. Forever grateful for my parents and my grandparents. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. I make dua that Allah blesses them endlessly in this life and in the next. MashaAllah. Ameen. And there's another question here. What is one dua that you have when it comes to your parents or your relationship with them? My dua, I say for my parents is, Allah have mercy for my parents, for they have raised me and opened their heart to Islam or forgive them for my sake, Ya Rab. I mean, MashaAllah. So of course, you are currently watching 30 Nights of Light, the communal Quran recitation and reflections. We had Imam Nihal Khan do the beautiful Quran recitation earlier tonight, and we've been hearing from Ustad Husay, Mujaddidi, and Sheikh Hisham Hamoud, uh, beautiful gems of our community who have been sharing the reflections on the verses um, of Allah's words. Uh, sharing is sharing, so share this link, share this stream on Instagram, X, on Facebook, um, wherever your friends and family are. Share the khair, share the goodness, and gain the reward in these beautiful nights of Ramadan, inshallah. And go ahead and click that notification bell and the subscribe button and the like button. Just want to remind you all that there is a 20% off site-wide sale on all orders above $100 at celebratemercy.org forward slash store. You can use the code Ramadan20 at checkout. It's a beautiful time to give gifts to those whom you love, books, apparel, kids, decor, Prayer rugs, Islamic art, and accessories, something for everyone. MashaAllah. So head over to celebratemercy.org forward slash store and get 20% off all orders above 100. Use the discount code Ramadan20. At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Ustada Hosai Mujaddidi. Ustada Hosai is an educator, public speaker, author, writer, spiritual counselor, and mental health advocate with over 25 years experience serving the Muslim community. She began her Islamic studies at the renowned Zaytuna College, where she was blessed to study a variety of topics with Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, Sheikh Muhammad al Yaqubi, Imam Zayd Shakir, and other visiting scholars. She currently offers year round classes on spiritual and self development for adults and youth through different local and no national organizations on a variety of topics. She is also a published author, writer, and active content creator on social media. She is a wife and mother of two and resides in California. MashaAllah, so we're gonna invite uh, Sada Hussai up once again. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah. Wa alaykum. Uh, I will pass it to you, inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Sayyidina wa maulana wa habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan um, again to celebrate mercy for all that they do. I really want to encourage everyone to please 
do whatever you can to spread uh, the, the message about this wonderful organization. It still, it shocks me whenever I meet, which is rare, but if I do meet people who don't aren't familiar with their work, I'm kind of stunned because their work is just so important. Uh, how many people have, have come to Islam, have come to a greater understanding of our uh, beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his life through their work. Uh, so I just encourage everyone to make it a mission, inshallah, on these, especially in these last Mubarak nights, to really make sure that the people in your circle know about this incredible organization and the work that they do. And now, alhamdulillah, as they're, un, you know, rolling out more in-person events, hopefully we'll see an increase and an uptick in, in membership and, and, and subscribers and all of that, but we can all do our part. So please do um, spread the word and, and make sure that people uh, know about it, alhamdulillah. Now, with that said, um, I don't know if the prompt that was read earlier was in any way uh, related to my um, my uh, segment, but subhanAllah, I kind of perked up as soon as I, I heard the question because it's very much related actually. We'll be uh, first commenting on uh, Surah uh, of uh, chapter 46, verse 15. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash rajim وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْحًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْحًا وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرًا حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ وَبَلَغَ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً قَالَ رَبِّي أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وعلى والدي وأن عمل صالحا ترضاه وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين. So if we go back to the beginning here, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, we have commanded people to honor their parents. So before we move on to to the rest, just that you know. Um, initial uh, line here about honoring their parents. We saw subhanAllah right away in that first comment that was read that this is, you know, uh, not always easy to do. Sometimes subhanAllah, depending on, again, a, the decree of, 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 of every, or of a person, they may find um, that, you know, their parents, one parent that they have a very strong bond with and another parent they're actually uh, challenged with. Uh, and this is very, very common. Um, some uh, people, of course, have an even more difficult situation where both parents they have a very uh, difficult relationship with. So to honor our parents and knowing that this is a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certainly can be a struggle for, for many people. But knowing that Allah, you know, just unilaterally uh, says that also is something to think about, especially with regards to what was mentioned in the previous uh, you know, segment with, with Sheikh Hisham about the time that we're living in. You know, we're living in a time where there are, it's a conditional now that, you know, even though your parents take care of you, they, you know, brought you into the world, they raised you, they fed you, they sheltered you, they provide for you um, for whatever reason. Maybe they weren't always nice to you. Maybe they didn't take you on vacations. Maybe they were strict, quote unquote, um, if, if they don't give you everything that you want or they're not always understanding of maybe your life choices or lifestyle choices, then you reserve the right to, uh, to cut off ties with them. That's the type of, you know, culture that we're in where it's now become very, uh, conditional where, you know, you don't need to necessarily look at all of their sacrifices as being anything of weight or importance, but rather, you know, it's really about where you are in life. And in fact, in many, unfortunately, in many more progressive left-leaning states now, we have policies where children are you know, given full rights to emancipate themselves from their parents, to um, completely, you know, free themselves from parent, and 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 and, uh, and um, you know, the state or the 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 laws are written so that parental authority is is taken away that way, right? So we we're living in a time where um, the relationship between child as parent and parent is fully under attack, and as I mentioned before, this is by design. This is not something that just came out of ideology or, or politics, but it's actually a very demonic uh, 
uh, impulse because Iblis knows that destruction of the family means destruction of the society. And we're seeing it. We're seeing it in real time as we see, you know, um, children uh, who are uh, so confused about everything. Uh, we have to ask, how did this happen? And if you look at videos or anything from from the West, just even up, up until 30, 40 years ago, there was uh, more, uh, you know, cohes cohesiveness in the family. You found at least there was, there were two parents, male and female, there were, uh, you know, families were at least somewhat together. But as we moved into or adopted these, these ideas about, you know, basically, if you're not fully, uh, you know, satisfied in, in the relationship, just like with, with, you know, premarital relationships, right? It's kind of the same idea that you can date. And if someone just doesn't fit, you know, you, or you don't like them, you can just discard them. And that has now been adopted to any relationship, every relationship, basically you live for yourself. It's a very narcissistic, individualistic, you know, way of living, which is, I, you know, someone does, I, I don't fit with them or they don't, you know, I don't, they don't like certain things about me that I can just basically do away with them. And unfortunately it's actually now, this is how people think about even the parental relationship. And it's really tragic because we see the ramifications of that. We see children lost. We see children completely captured by uh, these different, you know, groups and movements that sweep in, um, acting as though they are their saviors and, and they're, you know, going to help them uh, with whatever confusion they have. But we know that, you know, from just looking that that's uh, those, a lot of that is just words. There, there, there's no real substance to what they're offering. I mean, I could tell you cases where I actually have seen this, where children have been persuaded to leave their 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 families because of maybe some conflicting feelings with whether it's their sexual identity or other even their faith they may have confusion and so they get caught up in these waves of emotion and there's always those people out there who are ready to just pull them away from the very um, you know, from the very uh, place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created to be a safe haven for them, which is the family and the home. And that's why I think in many, for many reasons, why we see so much uh, turmoil in our society. So just on this first, you know, point here, so important that we as Muslims really hold firm to our faith. Honoring our parents, even if they're difficult, is Personally, it's going to challenge you, but this is dunya, we're all tested. But if you know that you will gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing so, by biting your tongue, by not talking back every time you want to say something, because sometimes, especially when there's generational or cultural differences, you know, your parents might come from a different culture, might come from a different generation altogether, and you feel like they are on a different plane of existence you may want to, you know, put them in their place to, um, you know, humble them because you think they're, they have views that are just so archaic or whatever it is. But part of, you know, our jihad with ourself is to also not give in to those types of ideas. Because if you're disrespecting the very people that Allah brought you into existence through and who again took care of you which uh, if we look at the rest of the verse it's now going to detail just how much our parents do for us and obviously we don't have memories i mean i don't have a memory of when my mother would wake up in the middle of the night to nurse me or to you know check on me i don't have any memories but subhanallah i have uh, relatives who who are um you know who who've uh, shared memories with me for example just the other day i was speaking to my eldest aunt living aunt and she spent a good 20 minutes just telling me about my own uh, childhood and how in afghanistan when i was i was born in afghanistan because we didn't have medicine uh, readily available and there were a lot of constraints to um, medical care i acquired some virus and I, I mean this is a pretty known story about me but she was going into the details and she was talking about both my parents and what they went through um the the absolute grief that they went through they were told by multiple people that basically I was going to die and there was nothing that they could do about it. My father actually, Allah Yerhamhu, when he was alive, told me that they were so convinced that I, it was just a matter of time that I would be gone 
that um, they actually bought a kafan. Uh, they were preparing for the burial, subhanAllah. I had lost a lot of weight. I was very emaciated. My bones were very brittle. I, I had a lot of uh, symptoms of this uh, illness. And of course, Allah is the best of planners. Um, and, uh, but but she, my aunt was just sharing with me the pain and the anguish that my parents went through uh, grieving potentially my, my loss and how much they suffered. And of course, she was also, you know, she suffered too. I guess everybody involved at that time suffered. So we, we forget these things. And it's very easy to take our parents for granted when we fall into these nafsi states, you know, especially as young adolescents or adults. I mean, I remember my teen years. It's like, you know, it's terror. Like, what do they call it? Um, I forgot there's a term for it, but it's, it's, you know, you, you throw tantrums. You, you're basically like a toddler just in a, in an adult form. And I certainly went through my phases. May Allah forgive me, but we, we can be quite, um, ungrateful for the blessings of our parents. And it's because I think the culture we live in uh, does not remind us enough. We do not have enough of a presence of even our um, uh, elders, for example. I mean, I've, I've mentioned this before, but it really disturbs me how the elderly in our society are hidden from plain sight. Like we don't see them. Uh, they're just not around. And if we do see them, it's likely in a hospital or in a nursing home. And, but, but, you know, if you go to traditional societies where family is still very important, they have a, they have a presence, you know, not just in Muslim societies, but if you go to Eastern um, Asian uh, cultures, you'll see elderly, they're still, you know, in uh, the home, they're still with family, the families are taking care of them, they're walking around, they're in society. So this is something that the West has really, I think, failed us uh, in terms of helping us to appreciate these bonds that are so important. But I, I just wanted to, and I, I might have gone over, forgive me, but I did want to just spend a little bit of time on specifically the mothers. And you know, obviously, I'm a mother. Um, so it's not biased that I'm sharing this, but it is something that I think is deeply important for uh, for women to know um, and also for men to be reminded of. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does dis, you know make a distinction here. He starts off saying that you know he, he we have commanded people to honor their parents, but then he he uh, you know he speaks specifically about mothers and the challenges that mothers go through you know, during the pregnancy and then obviously in the delivery and, you know, anybody who's, who's bore children, you know, it, it doesn't end there. There's so much more. And I remember, you know, the nursing and the, 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 the infancy period is so difficult because you're managing your own pain and all of the changes, physiological changes that your body's going through on top of a very needy young life. And of course, alhamdulillah for, um, for partners that are there with you by your side and for family members who step up. But I think the mental toll, the physical toll, the fatigue is just so great. And a lot of young mothers, they are not told that side of the story. They're just, you know, uh, warned about the delivery and maybe even the pregnancy, but what comes after. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, speaks about those, that period of difficulty and then, also, he he actually, um, you know, the, the verse says in time that that their period of bearing and weaning is 30 months, right? The, um, the actual period of uh, even nursing, right? But then that motherhood, right, and the hardships that we endure actually go all the way until the uh, that reach their prime, which the Mufassirin say is about 33 uh, years old, subhanAllah, that that's what that reference is. So, and it's true, like if you... And, you know, how, if your mother is alive, may Allah bless her and increase her, you know that even as a young adult or a, as an adult, once you get married, once you have your own children, your mother is still your mother. She is concerned about you. I mean, I remember if I called my mo mother, Allah, and I ever had like a scratchy throat or a cough, um, she would be so worried. Or if I left her house late, you know, to come home, she would call me uh, incessantly. Did you get home? Did you get home? So the mother's heart and the mother's worry and the mother's concern for her children is so great. I, I really don't think unless you are a mother or have experienced the un unconditional, unwavering love of a devoted mother, you may not understand how much it weighs on 
the heart of a, of a mother, uh, her children and protecting them and caring for them. Not to say that uh, the fathers um, don't have that, but I think there is a different emotional bond. And for that reason, Allah SWT is specifically reminding us here about the the respect due to the mother. And then of course that hadith, which I'll end on, the Prophet Sallallahu reminds us, right, the, the man who asked the Prophet Sallallahu a messenger of Allah who among the people is most deserving of my good companionship. And he said, your mother. And then he asked again, then who? And the Prophet said, your mother. And then again, who? Your mother. And on the fourth time, he said, your father. Now, this is again an indication. It's very established in our faith that the mother does have a rank uh, for that reason because of all of these hardships that we go through. And I think it's just an important reminder. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning it here, then all of us um Towards our own mothers, as children, we must really, um, you know, take heed of this warning to make sure we don't, we we don't, we can't even say oh subhanallah to our parents, but that we uphold our mothers and our fathers with the utmost respect and love. But also, you know, for those who are married um, and our husbands, you know, to honor their wives so that their children can do the same. It's it's it has to go all the way around. Everybody in the family has to really heed, I think, these verses because. It benefits everybody. When when a woman is honored, she will, inshallah, um, you know, be there for her family. She's obviously the, the nucleus uh, of the family unit, and this is what we want. This is how our our culture. I mean, um, our faith has been preserved, and many of our cultures have been preserved for so long. It's because we hold firm to uh, these beautiful reminders that family is in fact important, and preserving these bonds are in fact important, no matter what anybody says. So Alhamdulillah, Jazakumullah khair and forgive me. I know I went way over. I'll be happy to share some of my time with uh, Sheikh Hisham for his next reflection. He can have it all actually, if he wishes. Barakallah fikum. Jazakumullah khair. I want to invite uh, Sheikh Hisham to the stage um, to share some reflections uh, on Salah Hussai's reflections, mashallah. Bismillah. Uh, this, uh, mashallah. What, what can I add to that? Uh, I'm going to take a different angle to uh, further emphasize what um, our dear teacher has just imparted. Um, uh, it's a, you know, it's fascinating in the Arabic language. Uh, usually, a one root, uh, the the three letters of a root word, will have many different cognates. But also, you get the you get the the opposite, which is you have one conception. Uh, that that connects a lot of different synonyms, right? Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is that, <clears throat> you know, uh, so, so I mentioned several times about the emotional bond with one's family, um, and uh, you find that the concept of bondage uh, really does bring a lot of synonyms related to family together that are unrelated in their roots, but because they have to do with family, they all come together. So, for example... The word, um, like, let's go, let's go macro into uh, to micro. You have an extended family, mm -hmm. and that is uh, aila, right? And that comes from ala yaulu, which means to de to be dependent, right? Ayil uh, mm -hmm. is also related to that. Ayil is your dependent, and he's also your child who is mm -hmm. utterly dependent upon you, right? So you have aila and ayil, uh, the extended family and the child. Um, is dependent, right? And so, in that dependency, there's they're bonded to you, right? They they are they they are reliant upon you. Um, you go from extended family to nuclear family. Uh, usra, right? Usra is related to the word asir, and asir is literally a prisoner of war, right? And usra is a family, but asir is your POW basically. So every person in your family is like a prisoner of war and you can't break that bond right you just like like you, you can't you you know emancipation you said emancipation that's what that that's what's being um uh, adjudicated now in courts is emancipation where you yeah. can divorce your parents you can exactly. file for divorce from your parents right and they are literally you are their you are their pow you are their prisoner of war and and it is a jihad the Prophet mm -hmm. said, Fafihima Fajahid. So, you know, in their in their um in their uh, for their sake, struggle, right? Struggle for their sake. Fafihima mm -hmm. Fajahid. So it is jihad, it is it is a fight, it is a struggle. 
And you are not at war with your parents. You are at war with your raggedy old nephs vis-a-vis -vis your parents, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you go from, from extended family to nuclear family. You, you now get to brother, the word brother and, and sister, right? <clears throat> this comes from uh, 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 ach, right? The ach, mm -hmm. the ach, the brother. The achia, right? Because it comes from uh, 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 Hamza ha wow. The mm -hmm. achia is literally a rope um, by which you tie a horse to a peg. It's called an achia. Right, mm -hmm. so that rope that ties that horse to that peg is that is is what is that which bonds that horse. It binds that horse to that peg, so that so that it is not emancipated, right? So that it it it, it doesn't run away. Mm -hmm. It cannot escape, right? Because it is bound to that peg with an achia, and so the connection that I have to all of you as brothers and sisters in this faith is that we are bound one to another. And in the family, that bind that that binding is is through blood, right? But we are bound to one another just like that rope that binds that horse. You take it a little bit further then, and you get the word tifl, right? Which is um, an infant, right? An infant. And that is related to tufail, right? Which is a... Um, how do I say this um, with uh, with uh, sensitivity, right? A blood sucking leech. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> it's, I know that was the, the root word or another shared word. Wow, to fail. It's, it's a parasite, right? And, you know, yeah. you have this infant that is just it's a Klingon, literally a Klingon, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so you can't, you can't, you know, you can't break that bond, you know, and, I, and I'm just, you know, my, my heart aches at, at dumpster babies, right? Stop. Dumpster babies, right? It's a thing. It's actually a thing, right? And this is not just in the United States, but there, there are places around the world where, where babies are found in dumpsters, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, and, and that's, that's, you know, so these are unbreakable bonds, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse that um, our teacher has brought to our attention, um, uh, and uh, what is due to the parents is beauty. Right? Mm -hmm. is, is, is literally beautification, right? That we adorn our deeds toward them. It's not just doing your best, it's doing your most beautiful. Right, bringing beauty into the relationship, infusing the relationship with beauty, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala make that easy for us as children and as parents, Amen. right? Uh, especially as parents as well, you know, because we need to make that process easier for our children. And the the best thing that you can gift your child is a happy mother, if you're a father, or a happy father if you're a mother, right? The best thing that you can gift that child is a happy parent. Absolutely. May Allah make it so. I mean, what a beautiful lesson. The Arabic language is just so incredible. And mashallah, you always enlighten us. Thank you, Sheikh Hisham. There's a, two questions here, and they're, and they're kind of related. I do want to uh, present them to you both for your reflections and your, and your thoughts. Um, what about the parent that didn't do anything to take care of you and chose to walk away and indulge in the dunya? Are we obligated to keep ties with them as we age? And another question in a similar vein, my father has chosen alcohol my whole my whole life in prison and continues to do so. What if they are the one that has caused so much destruction to my family? What do you do then? How could you not blame them? Sure, subhanAllah. Jazakallah khairan. And these are, you know, the sensitive, um, you know, exceptions that we have to, you know, account for that. Yes, there are going to be relationships um, as, we're, as we're, were described where, you um, as I mentioned in the previous, with the previous question, that you're going to have to really pay attention to yourself. Uh, you know, if you feel that you can manage your feelings and you've overcome whatever 
pain from, that hasn't been inflicted on you because of your parents and, uh, from you know in the past and you can make room for them and you can show them grace and and kindness and mercy and compassion then you should i think it's good for for us to encourage people to try to overcome these uh these these feelings instead of being beholden to them because i've seen people live very um, bitter lives, you know, they carry that resentment, that rancor, uh, and they can't move beyond it. They can't forgive. And I think that's just that I, I wouldn't wish that for myself or for anybody. I would wish to overcome the pain that was inflicted upon me, but that takes time. And I don't think we can um, expect anybody to, to, you know, brush through that. So you'd have to really work on yourself. But I think just asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften your heart towards your parents. And this is where taking in their circumstance, asking maybe questions like what led them to, to, do, to do the decisions they, they you know, did or um, to make the decisions they made. Uh, and again, in due time, you don't have, if you're still wounded, if you're still hurting from whatever they've done, then take the time to heal and take the time to do what you need to do to overcome that. But eventually I think trying to uh, make excuses for people um, that in that, with that way of, of just questioning, like, you know, something must have happened to them also that led them to destructive behavior. Um, you know, and if we, if we can do that, I think we can um, overcome uh, and, and inshallah heal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, will see the effort that you're making this effort to try to um, bring peace and solace into your own heart, even though your rights were taken, even though you were uh, mistreated or, or abused in some cases, uh, that you are really trying for his sake to overcome those feelings. And inshallah, he'll be able to do that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a very subjective thing. And I think every person has to, uh, you know, work, work with, uh, with what they can and, um, you know, to, 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 to overcome these things. And I don't want to in any way be dismissive of people's real experiences and just kind of give these blanket statements. It's more that we should aspire to, um, to be as compassionate as forgiving. Why? Because this is again, a what we hope for from Allah, we ourselves make a lot of mistakes. And the more we can show grace, the more we can show compassion, then we will bring that for you know for upon ourselves and so alhamdulillah i think it's worth the effort inshallah Sheikh Hashan, please provide some guidance mm, alhamdulillah alhamdulillah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use you for his light i mean i mean why all of us inshallah barakallah fikum Yes, Nasrat. Uh, Anman, what yes. are we doing? Um, I was just overtaken by, you know, the, the question. So was I. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's very deep. But, you know, Asad Asai, I really appreciate the, the, the reminders that you're giving us and um, what you mentioned earlier about, you know, sometimes you do need that space and sometimes you need to collect yourself. But I think it's important for people to have a goal in their heart. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just step away with the intention being of just stepping away and that's the end result. But if the end result is like, no, I want to get to that place where I can forgive and I can have that good opinion and I can open my heart up. If we have that intention, I think that that's really, that's the beginning, right? Like that's what can get us to that point. But what I see a lot in society is that people just, the goal is just cutting people off and, and yeah. that never really leads to any kind of long-term happiness from, from what I've seen. But no, you're right. It, because cutting the the person off doesn't cut the the resentment, doesn't cut the poison that's buried in the heart. It'll just stay there. It might be suppressed a little, but it's not cleaning it out. And I think that's the mistake that a lot of uh, people make is they think by just you know out of sight, out of mind. But th these are deep spiritual realities that have to be you know unearthed, as they say. You know, it's like you can't. Um, plant uh, on on fresh soil if if you're if it's if you you don't you know remove the, all the the dead soil underneath so we gotta you know do that we have to clean the heart purge the heart of these things and forgiveness is a huge path forgiveness is a is a great path to Allah subhanahu wa taala and uh, and to be free of the emotional hold that a lot of these uh, relationships have over people uh, so I, I always try to encourage people to be on the path of forgiveness it's a beautiful path. 
ما شاء الله جزاك الله خير. So it's, it's, the momentum of Ramadan actually leads to that as well. If you if you think about it, شهر أوله رحمة وأوسطه مغفرة وآخره عتق من النار. A month whose beginning is compassion, which is in the heart, and then whose middle is forgiveness, which is actually the deed of compassion. And when, we have, when we have compassion manifested, it manifests as forgiveness. So compassion is inward, forgiveness is outward. Mm -hmm. And then once you're able to do that, you have release from torment. There's Absolutely. relief from torment, you know. So that's on that's on a macro level. Obviously, you know the 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 fire of hell, but also the fire of the burden of carrying that trauma around and carrying that abuse in in our hearts. We want to be on the path of forgiveness. I think that's beautiful. No one should forgive before it's time, but at mm -hmm. least be on the path, right? Because you don't want to just go through the motions with forgiveness, but you really do want to have these moments with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and try to understand that whatsoever happened happened you cannot change that you cannot go back into the past and change the course of 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 where you are and how you've gotten to where you are um but to be on the path of forgiveness and to acknowledge that this is where i this is what i'm aspiring to right i i inshallah i'll get there You know, I'll get there, but it's a work in progress, but it's work, inshallah. Yeah. You know. I think, I'm sorry, Arman, I, I, I know you wanted to step in here, but just quickly, just to uh, camel back, as we say, on Sheikh Hisham's point, one of the, I think, um, paradigm shifts that people have to have is forgiveness is not about giving uh, to a person who's hurt you. That's usually how it's framed. It's actually giving to yourself. It's, a, it's giving to yourself and your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you have that framing, I think it totally changes everything. Because if you look at it like, oh, they've hurt me, they've abused, abused me, they've done all this to me, and now you expect me to forgive them, it sounds like it's too much, right? But if you really start to see it as actually it's an opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing you to literally propel yourself to him, Uh, and and to you know uh, to advance uh, toward him through the process of forgiving a person who's harmed you, then it becomes a total different uh, experience, inshallah. And and that doesn't mean that you have to become buddy buddy with the person either. You know, I mean, uh, forgiveness is one thing, and and boundaries are another. And and uh, yeah, once bitten, twice shy. Not to put ourselves in this in, in, a, in a vulnerable situation. Where we may be able to, where we have to relive that trauma, or where we might be become hurt again, you know. Yeah. Uh, but forgiveness is between you and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you know. And if you can express that forgiveness to the person, then so be it. If not, then at least release yourselves from the burden, you know. And uh, and 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 you're the first beneficiary of that forgiveness. Uh, and it's it's to become God-like, right? Uh, take upon yourselves the characteristics of Allah, the attributes of Allah, right? And Allah forgives. Allah forgives, you know. And uh, and, uh, and so it's to tap into this higher angelic faculty that we have. We have it. We are capable of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has infused us with his names. And to be on the path of forgiveness, I think, is just uh, crucial, right? If we're not on the path of forgiveness, we're definitely... We're, we're definitely in the wrong, and we're wronging ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but at least be on the path. And you can crawl on that path, but mm -hmm. at least be on that path. Sure. JazakAllah khair. At this time, I'm just going to go to a couple of uh, announcements, and then we'll return, inshallah, with uh, Sheikh Hisham, Hisham's uh, second reflection, inshallah. Just as a reminder, brothers and sisters, of the Ramadan calendar that we have here at Celebrate Mercy, these amazing programs that have been going throughout this month for children, for teenagers, for tweens, um, and everyone in between. Um, so, you know, we have coming up on April 5th, the 27th night webinar in Dua, and then inshallah on April 9th, we'll have the Eid night webinar uh, navigating beyond Ramadan. And of course, there's recordings for um, many of these programs and you can learn more and sign up 
at celebratemercy.org forward slash Ramadan. And I encourage you, if you've missed any of the sessions that were available, uh, especially for the um, the recitations of the Quran, you know, the 30 uh, Nights of Light series, you can go back and, and watch them. And, and they're very beneficial, mashallah. Celebrate Mercy is hiring. So if you are interested in working for an amazing organization or you know someone who's interested in working for an amazing organization, uh, please do head over to celebratemercy.org forward slash careers to learn more and to apply. I want to return to the uh, audience prompt here. What does your relationship with your parents look like? You know, we've just had this amazing series of reflections with our beloved teachers and some really deep topics, some some really deep uh, uh, reflections that we've had that that strike a chord, I think, for many people who have had to deal with difficult relationships. And sometimes those relationships are the relationships with our parents. And so I just want to pull up a couple of comments here. Um, I have always respected and I and love my mom, but it's not until I became a mom I then realized the quiet sacrifice she made for us and never complained. I am who I am because of her. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless uh, all of our mothers, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, I have a good relationship with my mom. Definitely a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes your mom expects a lot of you and uses the card, I gave birth to you, raised you, and took care of you. Oh, they did. So... <laughs> So inshallah, you know, we can live up to the, the hopes that they have for us, inshallah, and become good children and and and, and embody uh, the prophetic light and, and be dutiful to our parents and, and those who raised us and who helped us. There's another comment here. I just forgave my dad five years ago when I came to realize that him raising me would have been worse for me than his absence. I'm not as close to him as my mom, but I'm working on building with him now. MashaAllah. May Allah reward you. May Allah facilitate your journey. MashaAllah. I reward you abundantly. Another comment here said, I'm so grateful for my parents, good, honorable, supportive people who loved us and gave us an education for, for this dunya and in our deen. Dad was here, was my hero. He passed three years ago. Righteous man. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your father and your family and your parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless today's webinar sponsor. So as you know, these webinars are sponsored. Um, this webinar is sponsor, sponsored by an anonymous family. The dua reads, Ya Rabbi, Ya Jabbar, Ya Shafi, mend our families and our ummah and heal us perfectly. Give us the best of this world and the hereafter. Amin. And the message from the family reads, our daughter was diagnosed with depression and anxiety and recently attempted suicide. Alhamdulillah, she feels better now. Please keep us in her duas. So I ask all of you to please keep this beautiful family in your du'as and to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give his healing, to give his blessings, to elevate this family, to uh, forgive this family, to grant them healing and to uh, embrace them with his mercy, with his love and his compassion. I just want to give a reminder that uh, we've raised $4,223 of our $30,000 goal uh, for the 27th. Um, and inshallah, please continue to give. You can hit the icon in the YouTube chat to donate. You can go to launchgood.com forward slash CM and um, be a part of the wonderful project that is Celebrate Mercy so that we can continue bringing you amazing programs in person and online and so much more, inshallah. I'd like to bring up uh, Sheikh Hisham for his reflection at this time. Sound like once again. Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 Well, you guys had that on cue. <laughs> I was just like, just waiting to, waiting to broadcast it. <laughs> it was beautiful. I, I saw it earlier and I was just like, I'm going to wait for that. Mashallah. All right, moving right along. Um, 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Salat ve selam Resulullah. Where are we? There we go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Qaf, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ We have created man and we know what his nafs whispers to him and we are closer to him than his jugular vein. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this incredible verse and, and Surah Qaf is one of these surahs that the Prophet ﷺ often recited. In fact, I believe it was his wife Zainab who said that she memorized Surah Qaf from the Prophet ﷺ's um, recitation of it uh, on the day of Jummah, right? On the day of Jummah, that he, the, uh, in, in the, for, for the khutbah, right? And that the Prophet ﷺ would just give Surah Qaf, right, as the khutbah. And, um, uh, or he would be reciting it in the salah, but but my, to my recollection, I believe it was through the khutbah because he would recite Surat Al-Ala and Surat Al-Ghashia for the prayer. But I need to go back and check that. It's been a long, long time since I've actually um, remembered to, that, that, that detail, subhanAllah. Uh, I had first learned of it some 20-some years ago. But she memorized it from just how much he recited it. And um, and it speaks about our it speaks about our death in a very epic epic way i mean there's a long passage and it starts with verse number 16 but a very long passage in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, creates the image uh the imagery right of what is to befall us on the day of judgment and 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 so i would i'm not going to get very far in in the passage but i would like everyone here to read that passage again starting from verse 16. allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that we have created man and we know what his ego um, whispers to him, right? And the nafs is the most, the, it's the most formidable of the four enemies of man, right? Which are uh, the, the, the uh, Lucifer, right? Lucifer, uh, the world, right? The dunya. So you have shaitan, dunya, and you have hawa, desire, or caprice, and nafs which is ego, right? So we know what his ego whispers to him, right? This nafs that is, that is unchecked, this nafs that is, um, that is out of control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what the, what the nafs whispers to the, the child of Adam. And the nafs is the most difficult of the four enemies to vanquish. Uh, the, the most cowardly of them is Lucifer. Because just by saying "A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim" or by saying "La Ilaha Illallah," he's already run for the hills, right? He's already run for. He cannot. He cannot. He cannot tolerate that Adam and his progeny bring Allah to his remembrance, right? That he is still driven by his envy of our rank above him. And so if we are able to exemplify our proximity to Allah and our rank with Allah and our, um, and our calling upon Allah, he cannot take that. That's, that's, that is punishment for him. That is torment for him. And so he runs away. So it's that easy to defeat shaitan. He has no sulta over us, no power over us whatsoever. As for the nafs, as for this raggedy old nafs, that is what takes time. It's you know once the nafs acts on hawa, acts on desire, and it becomes addicted to it, that it takes thirty to forty days to remove an addiction from the nafs. In general, right? That's what so, social psychologists tell us, right? Thirty to forty days to remove. The the uh, the addiction from the nafs, the 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 temptation that has set in so much so that shaitan doesn't even need to whisper it to the soul anymore. The ego does the whispering, right? To us, would be a nafsu, right? Now, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uses the word us whistle, and usually we think of waswasa as coming from Lucifer, min sharil waswas and khannas, from the evil of the whisperer who withdraws after his whisper. He withdraws. Right, he doesn't linger. He doesn't stick around. He just suggests, and then he goes on his merry way. 
right? But the nafs is there whispering, right? The nafs is there calling. And even after you have you have rid yourself of a vice, right? A few months down the road, a situation may arise in which the nafs is 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 reminding you of an of a prior addiction, right? Pulling you toward it again. So it's still there. It's still there. It's just dormant now because you have you have you have polished your, you know, your heart so much so that the light of the heart is blinding to the ego, right? It's blinding. But, you know, that, that, that light fades away with time. It fades away, and then what is dormant wakes up and arises again, right? وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ And we are closer to him than his carotid artery or his jugular vein. And there's another, if we have a doctor here who knows exactly what Habil Wadid is, I used to remember the technical term for it, but I forgot what it was. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, subhanAllah, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that Jibreel alayhi salam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this is a, a hadith Qudsi, right? It's a hadith in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet is quoting Allah, and it's not Qur'an. So he said that the heavens and the earth cannot contain me, but the heart of my faithful servant contains me. Right? The heart of my faithful servant contains me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, the, in, in his book, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bin al mar'i wa qalbi. Let me make sure I'm quoting correctly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa alamu an Allah yahulu bin al mar'i wa qalbi. Wa anahu ilayhi tuhshagun. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know, you know, know this, recall this, never, never forget this, that Allah stands between a man and his own heart and that unto him shall you be returned or gathered unto him shall you shall you be gathered that allah stands between a man and his own heart right uh, so the the allah is intimately engaged with us intimately engaged with us he knows that which is secret and that which is more subtle than the secret that which is even more hidden than the secret, he knows that we are closer to him than his own than his own stream of consciousness. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says we are closer to him than his own stream of consciousness. Uh, so that's my time here. Uh, we will have Usada Huzai's uh, 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 comments and insights. Inshallah, Allah ibarik fikum. MashaAllah, Jazakumullah khairan. What can we add to that? We can't add to that at all. I have nothing to add, MashaAllah, just, um, I mean, you talked about the, you know, the, the, the topics that I speak about almost on a daily basis. <laughs> so alhamdulillah with my students and uh, my, my middle school students, they'd probably tell you, oh, Khalo Sai, she's always reminding us of the four evils, always telling us about the nafs, um, so I appreciate, uh, alhamdulillah, your, your reminders and reflections. I think it's so important for, I mean, I, I think it didn't occur to me until I was way older that, that we have more than one enemy, right? And that the greatest enemy is within within us. We, we, I just, I think we've always uh, uh, externalized evil. We always assume that it's Iblis, you know, that's just, I think, a really convenient, easy scapegoat. So I remember when, you know, uh, our teachers finally, I mean, when we learned it, that subhanAllah, there's multiple sources of evil, but the one that you really are completely oblivious to is within you. And you have to pay attention because that is that voice that informs your mind, your thoughts, your decisions. And if you're not paying attention to that one and you're just looking out and, you know, finger pointing to everybody who's bad or Iblis or whoever else, then you are, you know, fully under the command of, of your nafs. And so that was really, I remember, just so eye-opening, like, subhanAllah, all this time where, where uh, 
you know, looking outward where we really need to be inwardly focused. So, Jazakumullah khairan. Allah um, You know, in the, um, since we're talking about this, uh, there's a, um, uh, we, I mentioned that social psychologists um, uh, prescribe 30 days, right, to mm -hmm. acquire a virtue or to rid oneself of a vice. Um, recently, before Ramadan, I put together, I spent a couple of weeks learning how to do this, but I put together a habit tracker and progress chart uh, that I would like to gift to anyone who's interested, but it's basically a 40-day challenge. Mm -hmm. And we have a forum also where you can join a WhatsApp group, uh, in, anyone who wants to take the 40-day challenge, and it's uh, distributed across um, that which is devotional, and that which is related to purification of the heart um, through the eyes, the ears, the tongue, uh, the hands, the feet, the stomach, and the privates, right? And so there are different goals there. There are more than 50 different goals that a person can go through. And so it's like a, it's like a, uh, it's a hijra to Allah and his messenger through these um, goals that one says, these spiritual rites of passage. Uh, and so if you're interested, uh, you can download the spreadsheet from... Um, from uh, lanterna.com forward slash uh, 40 days. Uh, I, uh, I, um, I just uh, sent it to you guys here if you want to share it. Um, but it's a habit tracker. And the one rule is that if you get to day number 36 or 37 and, you, and then you miss it, right, then you've got to delete all the checks, all the progress. You delete all of that. And then you start again from day number one. But it's a very good tool to, to use especially now that we have the head start with Ramadan and uh, and then, uh, you know, following uh, into Shawwal, we, we uh, retain the traces of the blessings of Ramadan by, by, taking, um, by taking the lessons forward, inshallah. 40 days, right? So it's a 40 day challenge. I don't know. Uh, just to add, because there are so many great resources uh, and I really appreciate what, what you've contributed. There is um, a YouTube page that I think if you have young children or for your own knowledge, it's really helpful to, to, uh, to learn more about the nature of the nafs and these different evils. But I think it's called the ink of knowledge. Uh, maybe if I get a chance, I'll bring it up. But they do these really cool videos. It's graphic videos where they take uh, many of these lessons come from Imam al-Ghazali, of course. And so they then, you know, uh, they... Um, they do uh, like animations, but they, they're they really well done. And I think it's very helpful because it kind of outlines everything we're talking about, but with more descriptions, with more of uh, the information. Yeah, I, that I just added the link for that in the uh, thing. So the, they can show that as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mashallah. So yeah, check out their, 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 the Imam al-Ghazali series, but they're really good for kids. I mean, you know, adolescents, I think it's appropriate for not younger children, but for, for that middle school age. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'm just going to move to a couple announcements and then we'll have um, Asada Hasai's reflections. Sometimes it gets confusing going back and forth. We'll have Asada Hasai's reflections, inshallah. And then there's actually, there's a bunch of questions that have been coming in the chat. So we'll try to address a couple of them in the interest of time and then we'll conclude, inshallah. inshallah. So um, shall be back in a second. Sorry, I'm, this thing is glitching out. There you go. Um, brothers and sisters, Friday, tomorrow night, the 27th night, special prower, prayer, and promise, a special program for Layla Um, Please join and, and benefit from the amazing lineup of seekers that we have. Inshallah, you can head over to celebratemercy.org forward slash night 27. We hope that you will join us and benefit, inshallah. And don't forget, Friday. Why is Friday important, aside from the fact that it's Juma? It's because it's the biggest prize day, the 27th of Ramadan. First place prize will receive quadruple the amount, so $20,000 from Launch Good. Of course, this is referring to our Launch Good campaign that Celebrate Mercy is running, um, our goal of reaching $1, uh, sorry, $1 million. Um, we are trying to reach that uh, $20,000 goal. And we also just want to mention that we also have, uh, it's a match day. So donors are matching up to $30,000 uh today so please do donate generate, donate generously to celebrate mercy um 
you know, as we're going through this program, these questions are coming in, the community is engaging online and these scholars from wherever they are, are tuning in, are contributing to this program and answering these questions and helping us to navigate our spiritual journey. It's an amazing thing. And uh, I'm truly grateful for a platform like Celebrate Mercy that is able to provide us with, with these streams, with these webinars that we can benefit from one another, we can learn, we can have each other's company in this digital space. And of course, Celebrate Mercy is aiming to do a lot more than the webinars, but in-person programs and programs for children and adults and everyone in between. So please do uh, support Celebrate Mercy, head over to the launch good. Um, right now we are at uh, 4,291. So we are under that $6,000 mark. Uh, please do donate generously at launchgood.com forward slash CM. And once again, that Friday goal is $30,000 and donors are matching donations up to $30,000 on Ramadan's final Friday. So please do what you can. Please give what you can, inshallah. And at this time, I'm going to invite Ustada Hasai for her second reflection, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallah fikum. Alhamdulillah. So I did want to go over a few verses, but I think um, because of time, I'm not, it's probably over, over ambitious of me to think I could have done all of them, but at least we can just look at the verses here and I'll try to tie in why I chose them. Um, uh, this would be Surah Al-Hajarat, verse 10 to 13. So we have here, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخْوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ um, And then the next verse, we'll just go through them quickly here. The next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking now about, you know, uh, O believers, do not let uh, some men, he starts off with uh, ridiculing others, that may be better than them, nor let some women ridicule. So the idea of mocking, you know, defaming, uh, calling people by offensive nicknames, all of that is in just this one verse so much to think about because, you know, we started off describing the ideal. It's brotherhood that we're together. We uh, make peace with one another. We don't allow for, you know, our, our, our bonds to be broken like we talked about in the previous segment. And why? Because, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, here, be mindful of Allah, right? So that you may be shown mercy. Make sure basically to keep your relationships intact, to not fall into uh, these uh, divisive, uh, you know, um, things that, that happen in, in relationships because we want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the end goal. We want Allah's mercy, so we need to preserve and protect our bonds. Now he takes us through the ways that those bonds can be compromised. So the next verse is talking about, again, mocking, ridiculing, defaming, right? Calling each other names, evil. Um, how evil is it to act rebelliously after having faith? So think again about, you know, the, the very common things that happen in human relationships. This is almost every day people experience these things, whether again, it's with friends or with community members, with extended family members, with siblings, sometimes in the same household, these things are occurring. And then we go to the next verse, which is about... Um, verse number uh, 12 here. Now it's getting more specific, right? Because of the kind of general patterns of evil. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again redirecting to root causes of how we even get to those places, right? How we get to a place of, you know, uh, of mockery, of, of insults, of injury, of causing so much um, again, division is because of something that we are some we're not always aware of, which is starts within the the heart, the the soul, right? Which we talked about with Sheikh Hisham, the nafs being uh, the greatest root of evil. The nafs inspires to evil, and part of what it inspires to is suspicion. So suspicion, negative thoughts, su adhan, thinking poorly of another person, uh, letting arrogance enter the heart, where you actually start to look down upon people leads to what? Those thoughts are so dangerous. And if we're not controlling or being mindful of those thoughts, which is what Allah told us to do, to be mindful of Allah, because if we don't have taqwa, then we, what do we do? We indulge those thoughts. We start to go down the rabbit hole of suspicion. And usually these things, you know, depending on the circumstance, they can evolve into something that becomes even more harmful. It's one thing to have a negative thought about someone and keep it to yourself, but usually that's not where it ends, right? Usually suspicion and evil thoughts go to the next 
uh, level, which is where backbiting is now, uh, you know, um, uh, where backbiting occurs, where you have to, uh, you feel forced or compelled to share your suspicion with someone about someone with another person or a group of people. So, I mean, to, the idea that people would come together in a social setting, maybe um, casually to maybe to come just to catch up or eat, but then eventually end up um, as, you know, the verse is so descriptive here. And it's something that we have to really pause and think about that you're, you're dining on the flesh of your dead brother, Aldo Villa, when we lead, let those, uh, those suspicious or you know, wrong, sinful thoughts that we have of other people, most of the time unsubstantiated. A lot of it is just, you know, pure, again, conjecture. You you maybe see something on social media. You heard something about someone. Gossip mill, there are people who this is what they do. They just, you know, they like to talk about other people's lives, other people's relationships, other people's choices, whatever it is. And then they bring that to social gatherings. And so you're sitting around a table, um, whether you're, you know, having coffee or eating lunch, or, or dinner, whatever the case may be, the, the likeness of that conversation turns pretty grotesque because it is, uh, again, um, compared to, to cannibalism, like you're feasting on the, on the dead flesh. So this is these are all the khutuat of shaitan, the, the, the way that he you know, uh, gets us to to make these uh, you know grave sins is by small things that we don't we don't notice. So pay attention to that negative thought that you have of anybody. If you have a thought about someone where there's no um, evidence whatsoever, you have to immediately see that as a root evil from within yourself and seek protection from Allah. Iblis, of course, he may whisper something to you but if you entertain the idea right because if a thought is fleeting and what we're supposed to do with evil thoughts is just kind of you know they're just passing by because we can't control the mind we can't control iblis's waswasa that if he decides to um, make those types of suggestions to us but what we can control is what we do with that information or what we do with that suggestion so if you take that suggestion and you give it life you breathe life into it by thinking further upon it, and, hmm, I wonder. And now you're, you know, whether you're on Facebook looking for information, people will go to some pretty crazy lengths to try to ascertain, you know, private information about other people. They want to know. And it's like that need to know comes from the nafs. And if we don't uh, really, you know, stop it in its track, stop our nafs in its track, then we eventually fall into even graver sins. So this, you know, way of, of I, I just love how, of course, everything about the Quran is so beautiful, but how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping us to see the, the very evils that our nafs can produce and why we have to be so watchful over it. Because ideally, we're supposed to be one ummah, right? United, bonded, but without... Uh, managing the nafs, we end up causing so much division, so much um, enmity, so much animosity, so much hatred. And then from, from, you know, these behaviors, I really love how the next verse is now uh, specific to the, I think what I think is one of the most important bonds um, in, in existence, which is between the male and the female, right? Allah subhanahu says, This verse is one of my favorite verses because it's it's this is it. This is the formula. Allah subhanahu is telling us that the male and female were created as complementary to each other. We are supposed to be partners. We are supposed to be awliya. We're supposed to be friends with one another where we really help support each other. But again, we're living in a time where these relationships are under attack. And this is a demonic uh, you know, thing. It's not something, you know, just that just came up out of nowhere. Shaitan knows that again, at the heart of, of uh, human relationships is the male and female bond. And so this whole attack on gender, this whole question about what is a woman, this whole ideological push on trying to redefine human sexuality and all of these things that are established fact, anybody with any sense, common sense, any intellect at all can see objectively, we have a male and a female. There's no, uh, you know, we're, we're, there's no such thing as a human who's non-binary. The only non-binary is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is proof that Iblis is behind that 
agenda, the idea to try to blur the lines between the male and female and erase these uh, ideas all comes from Iblis because he knows that by doing that, what comes next? The family, right? Marriage, the institutions that bring us together come next. And then our, our communities and then our nations and all of those beautiful things that, that human beings are capable of when we're flourishing, you know, when we're doing well, when we're actually doing what we were created to do, which is to uh, create, to build, to grow. Iblis doesn't want that. He wants death, destruction, decay, confusion, chaos. And that's why we have to really be careful of falling into any any ideas that cause rifts between the male and the female bond. We uh, women as women, we have to appreciate our men folk. They sacrifice, they work very hard. They do jobs that most of us would never do. I would never, and I know most, almost every friend of mine, I know for a fact, they would never go into fields like, you know, like construction work, um, very physically demanding labor. I mean, all of the, you know, the, 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 the physical work that builds the societies together, who's doing that work? These are hard jobs. I mean, I have a, and just in my neighborhood, we have homes being built. And every day I see these men, they come out after fudger sometimes, like literally right when the sun is up, they're on top of roofs. They're doing jobs that I couldn't imagine doing. I would just never wish to do that. But subhanAllah, someone has to do them. And usually they're men um, or just even, you know, our, our, the, the protectors of society, right? The law enforcement, vast majority are men. Um, if, if we were ever to go, uh, God forbid, in, in a war uh, like situation, we would expect men to go first. Most women would be like, yeah, you should. I'm not going if, if God forbid there was a draft, we would expect the men to go because that's what men are supposed to do. So we have to appreciate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them these uh you know physical um, abilities and these these um these uh, uh, these um roles in society where we are the benefactors we benefit from their their service and and all that they do for us and so that that means that we see them as beneficial and we see them as partners in life that we're work, working together and vice versa obviously women do a lot we talked about the role of women and motherhood and all of the things that we contribute and of course intellectually there's no debate here we don't need to go into those petty squabbles about men and women being equal and, and everything has to be the same. No, we don't have that uh, issue in our faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already settled it. it in terms of value, in terms of the good deeds that we produce, in terms of our efforts spiritually, there is no difference. But is there a difference in the roles that we play in society? Absolutely. Should we feel threatened by each other? No, that's only from, again, Iblis or pe modern people who want us to see each other as antagonistic towards one another. But that's not our tradition. Our tradition is that we we love uh, one another for the sake of Allah because we see that we are mutually uh, you know, uh, benefiting one another and also contributing to the benefit of our societies. So really important reminders. And just to, I think, you know, uh, wrap up here, when we look at these four verses, the, the final point here is the ideal is we're supposed to be one, uh, you know, one Oma. So any message that in any way causes division or uh, brings that under attack or undermines that, we have to question what is, who's behind it? Because Allah subhanahu wa he unifies uh, his creation. He brings us together. He is one and he wants us to be one. We do everything together right now. We're fasting. We pray together, subhanAllah. So division is just so antithetical to our faith and we should really pay attention to any person individual group movement that causes division and know that that's not our faith alhamdulillah jazakumullah khairan jazakumullah khair ustad sai just uh we keep going back to that theme of uh every ism is a prism of a mind in prison, Michelle. So with that, I'm okay. going to bring back. Uh, I, like it. I wrote it down. I actually wrote it down. <laughs> Such a <laughs> wise, wise person, Mashallah. Mashallah. Sheikh Hisham, mm -hmm. uh, there you are. Is that <clears throat> um, what can I say? Uh, what can I say after that? Allah Akbar. Um, that was so, um, so needed, right? And it's uh, an on repeat. I mean, just like, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, what you articulated there uh, should not be an act of courage. <laughs> but in our day and age, it's an act of courage to articulate what you've just uttered. Right? Ah. And 
and we have so politicized this issue, and it's and and it's not our issue, but it's sort of uh, you know, forced it upon us. Um, where you know we we understand our cosmology, we understand how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has placed male and female here to balance one another out, and um, just recently, um, Joe Biden, right, uh, Uncle Joe. Uh, sloppy Joe. Uh, he says um, he said he, he posted on Twitter uh, today on Transgender Day of Visibility. So that's a that's a new holiday now that is being um, that 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 we were expected to ascribe to uh, today on Transgender Day of Visibility. I have a simple message to all trans Americans. I see you. Uh, you are made in the image of God, and you're worthy of respect and dignity. Right? So, I mean, you, you, th this is just like you, you're making up religion on the fly. Right? You are, don't bring God into this. Mm -hmm. Don't bring God into this. God, you know, the, that quote, you are made in the image of God. If you read Genesis 1.27, uh, we, we read, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. <laughs> right? So, so the very verse that you're quoting out of the Bible, out of Genesis, if you keep reading the verse, it says he created them male and female. Mm -hmm. So, so how, how, how are you making this up? Right? How are you even making this up? That, that you know, that... Uh, that, uh, like you said, you know, there's, there's, there's no binary with God, and there's no, there's no, you know, there, there's no multiplicity with Allah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is one. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, ahad, and seeking to, to, uh, to, to uh, uh, partner with Him in His ahadiya that you have total neutrality now that you're neither this nor you're that. You're not, you know. Uh, we've we've solved that problem a very long time ago, um, and so the the uh, um, you know Dr. Abdul Hakim Winter uh, Abdul Hakim Jackson says no Abdul Hakim Winter, right? He said that uh, men men and women can never be equal, right? This is in one of his contentions, a beautiful contention, right? Men and women can never be equal. You can never have two equal things. Whatever is equal is the same, right? And men and women are not the same. Men and men can never be equal. Women and women can never be equal. Equality is one of these. It's one of these isms again. It's one of these. 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 It's a false narrative. It's a false paradigm, and it. And it's not. It's not real. Right? It's not real. Uh, he says men and women can never be equal, because they are mutually superior. Right? And it's just like so, just. <laughs> It's principle. It's principle. They're mutually superior, right? And so we can talk about this all day, uh, all day, all night. But these are our categories. This is how we understand reality. This is how we, and, and, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala um, sets it out in Surah Al Hujurat and elsewhere in the Quran that mm -hmm. from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He created pairs, right? And and from the pairs comes a multiplicity, right? But the basis, the very basis, is the duality, right? In our and everything, everything he created into pairs, right? The duality there, and in the duality, you have an inherent complementarity. Absolutely. Uh, and so, do not, do not, uh, do not think that you can improve upon the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll render it a, a deformity, right? You'll you'll render it a, a mutation, right? Mm -hmm. A very a clone of existence, right? But not, it's not reality. No. Exactly. So I'm sorry. I'm I'm. Speaking out of turn here, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you uh, for sharing those words. Uh, our dear, dear teacher, our dear teacher, may Allah give you wisdom and increase your wisdom. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen, and open our hearts to receive it. Ameen, Rabbi. Ameen. Ameen. I just wanted to um, present uh, just right before we conclude, two, because there's a lot of questions, and I want to uh, be fair to the audience. So I'm going to present two questions, inshallah. Um, the first one is, um, this one we were talking earlier about uh, talking about people. So is, is talking about celebrities slash entertainment news, any influential figures considered bad? 
should we refrain from ever discussing anything about other individuals? I, I would I would say yes. I would caution against talking about anybody who's living, um, especially in a way where you're condemning them or you're speaking of them as though they are just the worst. You know, I mean, I remember there's so many celebrities who get dragged through the mud. Um, but at the end of the day, we don't know their end. We don't know our end. And that's the ultimate bottom line. That's the ultimate way of just the equalizer, you know, that, that because we don't have outcomes, we need to hold our tongues. We can hate the sinner, the sin, not the sinner, right? Leave the, the sinner alone. But you can talk about things that perhaps certain celebrities are doing. You can speak about the you know, the, the things that they're promoting that are harmful, but to actually go after individual people is, is just not our way. We don't do that, especially living people. Other than that. And even those who've passed on, we don't know their, their end with Allah. We don't know them. Just leave them to Allah. Yeah, it's best to, um, you know, the Prophet has said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yaqul khayran. Only ask much. Right? Exactly. And that's that's just, you know, whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him speak that which is good, pure, wholesome, uh, constructive, that which is beautiful, right? Uh, or let him just maintain his silence. Just be quiet. If you don't have anything better to say, if you don't have anything, anything fruitful, anything good to say, then... then Now, if we're warning people, right, like Ustada Husay just mentioned, that, you know, if there's something that they're promoting that is harmful, then we, then we criticize that, right? But... Leave them alone. I mean, I remember Robin Williams, right? The late Robin Williams. I mean, he he made the entire world laugh. I mean, the entire he moved he moved the entire world into laughter, and committed suicide in the end of his life. You know, you, you don't know what people are going through, especially especially when when they become, you know, when they become rich and famous and whatnot. I mean, people people have severe mental health issues, who are. Uh, who, who you would never you would never know it. You don't know what people are going through. You just don't know. Um, and so, uh, let us not pollute our tongues with the reputations of people. Instead, let us let us uh, replace all of that with glorifying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The Prophet Sallallahu said, "Dunya malunun wa malunun fiha." Right? That the, the the world is accursed, and accursed is everyone in it, except dhikrullah, illa dhikrullah, except the, the 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 mentioning of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right? Let us let us accustom our tongues and, and moisten our tongues with that which will call people back to Allah and His Messenger. As a, instead of instead of you know getting uh, you know polluting them in, in tabloids and and um, and and the he said she said right you know he was like and then, and then he was like and then and then they were like and then we were all like <laughs> this culture of like what 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 it's just so so. Um, uh, it's just so plastic. It's so um, uh, superficial, petty, pathetic. Yeah, it's petty. It's all of that. It's frivolous. It's frivolous, right? We have to like literally. If if we if we lived today as though we were going to die tonight, I don't care who was like what. Mm -hmm. You know, no, it's not going to be on anyone's mind or on anyone's tongue, right? Let's get about the work. Get about the business. Carry forth the mantle of the Prophet ﷺ, become beacons of light, transform ourselves, guard our tongues, right? You know, this is this is what we need to be focused on and not, you know, the he said, she said. We're people of love, right? Not like, you know, we don't care. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> A wise woman once said. <laughs> it reminds me of that verse in the, um, in the Quran where Allah SWT says that, you know, the people forgot about Allah, so Allah caused them to forget about themselves. And mm -hmm. the more we concern ourselves with the affairs of others, with other things that are happening, Absolutely. we forget and Allah leaves us. Um, the second question here, this is a heavy question. Um, I just maybe per, uh, perhaps because of the time that we have, you can give some words of hope here. Um, can you kindly ask the scholars to address my question? Why do Muslim communities ignore single moms and their kids, offer no support when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu last sermon said, care for them? SubhanAllah. You know, I, I agree. I think it's a, a, a problem. I, I see it in my own community. It's actually heartbreaking. You know, not all, I, I know that it's definitely a common problem. We lack resources in many of our communities. There's a, such a demand. I know just within our own area here in the Bay Area, 
the um, skyrocketing um, demand for zakat funds for families, for people of all different backgrounds, not just single parents, single mothers, but other um, families as well. Some of them who are, again, food insecure. They just don't have, you know, refugees, they've come from different backgrounds, has really limited the resources that we may have once been able to provide um, for uh, for women in these types of positions. But alhamdulillah, like we're also trying. We do have, for example, and, um, you know, we have, um, I mean, I do the kids monthly for sisters specifically who are in these circumstances, single mothers, widowers, divorcees, people who are in, you know, just dealing with a lot of life problems because there's stigmas. There's a lot of, you know, issues that prevent them from, um, from even, turning to their own families. And in, in some cases, you know, there's ongoing, for example, um, you know, uh, lawsuits or, or child, you know, custody battles. There's so many things that could be affecting uh, a, a woman's ability to lean on family and other support systems. So um, we try to provide a space for that. But I feel like what we can do is encourage uh, women, especially if they're single, to advocate for themselves. We all, I think, at a certain point have to realize the masjid and you know the, our, our spaces are for all of us and if anybody feels like they're not being uh, taken care of they have the right to petition to go to their masjid board and say you know this is a need there are women like me or other individuals like me who um, you know who need support and if you have uh, zakat funds and you have services um, allocated for these types of social services, then please prioritize our needs. But I feel like um, sometimes people just see the problems and they're not willing to take that extra step to push for their rights. So I would encourage you and anyone else who sees this in their community, if you feel like there are too many single women who are just not being helped then push and go straight to the board and put pressure on those people. They're appointed in those positions for that reason. Um, we have a lot of embellishments in the masajid. We have a lot of funds going to things that maybe are not as priority. Um, but when it comes to people who feel marginalized or just not like nobody's really helping them, they are priority, but we have to, we have to advocate for them. So may Allah help us, may Allah help our community. I mean, you know, the uh, Anna, the mother of Maryam, alayhi salam, mm -hmm. she, she brought her into the world as a single mother. Mm -hmm. uh, Amran had uh, passed. And there's a parallel between her and, uh, and uh, between Maryam in that regard and uh, Sayyidatina Amina, alayhi salam, the, the mother of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi salam. You know, she also brought the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi salam. Uh, into the world after having um, uh, well, no, no, the, the parallels between Hannah and Sayyidatina Maria uh, uh, Amina. Uh, Amina, Ali Hassan. Thank you. So you know the the um, as a single mother, it's fascinating what she received from her community, right? Because the men stepped up, right? All the men stepped up, and they wanted to all of them wanted to take care of Maryam and to to look after her make sure her needs were taken care of this is this is the daughter now the the the, the newborn the infant and uh Zakaria was the prophet at the time and he was he he wanted a son he wanted a daughter he wanted progeny right he he was an old man and he didn't have children to take care of and so he wanted the care of Maryam, but the men who followed him, the men who obeyed him, the men whom he had raised, the men who, who, who you know, this is their prophet, Zakaria is their prophet, they vied against him to take care of her, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of a community is that, that the men come together and vie against their own prophet to take care of an orphan? Mm -hmm. What kind of community are we talking about? And they ba basically told him that if it be the will of Allah that you should care for Maryam, then so be it. So let's draw lots. And so they drew lots, right? They that that's the extent to which they they um, they uh, opposed him, right? Mm -hmm. Because they each wanted the honor of caring for 
this single mother and her child. Right? While we have men running around here, Muslim men running around here, marrying non-Muslim women. Mm -hmm. Right? Marrying non-Muslim women because it's it's uh, supposedly uh, permissible in the Quran. There, there are conditions to that. There mm -hmm. are conditions to that. It has to be a Muslim ma majority country in order for you to take a wife who's not who's not Muslim. Mm -hmm. You and, and that's and and that and that woman has to agree to raise your children as Muslim, even in the case of divorce. Even if the, if there's divorce, she will continue to raise your children as Muslim, even in the case of divorce, contractually, right? And here in this country, the, the children go to the mother. They don't go to the father. The default is that they go to the mother. In a Muslim country, the default is that the children go to the father, mm -hmm. right? And they follow the religion of their fathers, right? So there are conditions for that. And we've got all these Muslim men marrying these non-Muslim women. M meanwhile... Our sisters cannot find husbands, mm. and those who you know, and 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 the the marriage the the the, the marriage bus, if you will, had mi has missed them, and they're getting older in age. You know, they're 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 aging now, and no, and the suitors aren't coming around for some reason, right? And then you have, uh, or for one reason or another, and then you then you have uh, divorcees, right? And mm. and and widows, right? Who's going to take? Who's going to step up? If if the Muslim men are not even uh, are not even interested in marrying the faith, you know, so we, we have a crisis in this community, a, a, a real crisis in every country. You know, every state I go to, there's a there's there's eligible women for marriage, and they cannot find mm -hmm. they cannot find them, right? And so you know, this is this is one of the things that, that it's a crisis, and the Prophet wasallam he was, as you said, even up until his very last sermon, up until his very last sermon, he was hitting on this point for the community, and 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 it and you know it need not fall on deaf ears in 2024. Hmm. Please, what's the other side? Were you about to say something? I don't. No, just so appreciative. That's such a honest. Uh, response to to a real problem. Barakallahu feekum, Sheikh Hisham. beautiful reflections and, and sobering and very real. And I appreciate both of you for not just your reflections um, and your assistance in helping us understand these these issues, but also staying past the a lot of time and, and being here with us. Um, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless both of you and your families and your loved ones. And give you a beautiful remainder of Ramadan. May I ask uh, a request um, for either of you to make dua, inshallah, uh, so we can end the uh, this question. Of the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That that's that's really good. <laughs> that's really good. <clears throat> I need to try that one of these days. <laughs> I learned it from you. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. I'm. I'm gonna come. I'm. I'm gonna see. You. Is she gone? She's gone. <laughs> I, uh, she's here. If you want. She's to say <laughs> uh, Bismillah. Allahumma inni da'in da'in faqulu amin. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tawafana ma al abrar. جعلنا من المحسنين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم جعلنا من شاهدي ليلة القدر يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم جعلنا من حاضري ليلة القدر يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا تحرمنا بركتها اللهم لا تحرمنا آثارها اللهم لا تحرمنا يا رب العالمين القرب منك فيها يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اكتبنا من الذين يصومون يوم يومها ويقومون ليلها يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا وقيامنا وفطورنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم تقبل منا جهدنا في هذا الشهر في شهر الصبر اللهم اجعلنا من أهل القرآن وخاصته يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا تحرمنا معية رسولك صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم في الحركات وفي السكنات 
وفي الأقوال وفي الأفعال وفي الأحوال يا أرحم الراحمين في هذه الدنيا وفي الأخرى يا كريم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين بارك الله فيكم جزاك الله خير Thank you so much Sheikh Hisham Sada Sai for being with us Inshallah we'll uh, hear from you both soon yeah, Take care Sada Sai All the best Amin wa Ishmael Beautiful dua Mashallah You got me this time <laughs> Brothers and sisters, another beautiful session with our uh, esteemed teachers, uh, scholars who have given us so many beautiful reminders uh, throughout this evening. Uh, may Allah SWT give us the ability to model prophetic character and to truly respond to his call of uh, rectifying our character, rectifying our hearts, purifying our hearts, and becoming the best that we can be. Inshallah. Um, I would like to now just go over a couple announcements before we conclude. Once again, the 27th night special, which will be taking place today, later today, it's 2 a.m. here on the East Coast, uh, 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Eastern time. You can go to celebratemercy.org forward slash night 27, inshallah, to RSVP. And don't forget that it is Friday and the biggest prize day for uh, Launch Good, which first place will quadruple $20,000 from Launch Good uh, that we will receive. So please do donate um and it's going to go a long way and like we mentioned you can join the webinars that will be taking place to that go over the work that celebrate mercy will be doing inshallah so you can uh feel free to donate generously inshallah and celebrate mercy is also hiring so if you or someone you know would be interested in working for a wonderful organization that is driven by purpose driven by meaning uh feel free to learn more and apply at celebrate mercy celebrate mercy.org forward slash careers and of course, there's a Ramadan sale, 20% off site-wide on all orders above $100. You can find books, apparel, kids, uh, items, decor, prayer rugs, Islamic art, and accessories. Use the discount code RAMADAN20 at checkout, celebratemercy.org forward slash store. And of course, we were talking about those webinars earlier. Uh, right here, you see 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Friday, April 5th. There will be a webinar. These webinars are basically meant to go over 2023's projects and 2024's goals. So we'll have brief uh, Ramadan reflections presentations with Q&A with Celebrate Mercy's uh, director and speakers. And so you can RSVP at CelebrateMercy.com forward slash review, inshallah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, charity does not diminish wealth. The believer's shade on the day of resurrection will be his charity. Give charity without delay, for it blocks calamities. We're at 61% of our Ramadan goal. MashaAllah. So, be a part of this mission to share the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, his beauty, his character, sharing these reflections like we've had throughout this evening with the world, with our community. Uh, please be a part of this amazing initiative. You can go to launchgood.com forward slash CM and donate. Uh, help us reach our goal of $1 million. And of course, uh, like we mentioned, we want to get to that goal to uh, get the first place prize from Launch Good as well. Today is a match day. Donors are matching up to $30,000. Please do donate um, before you sign off this evening. Inshallah, give give something so that uh, you can go to sleep with that with that good feeling. You know, after you do something good, go to sleep with that good feeling, inshallah. Uh, or stay up and do your ibadah and then come back and donate again and just keep it going, inshallah. Uh, right now, we are at $4,491. So we're right under that $6,000 mark. Uh, of course, the goal for Friday is $30,000. Inshallah, throughout the day, with your generous donations, we can get to that goal. Launchgood.com forward slash CM. And of course, we want to hear from you. Please share your thoughts on our brief feedback survey. Inshallah, celebratemercy.org forward slash night dash survey. The link is in the chat. Oh, Sheikh Hasham, we actually want to bring Sheikh Hasham back to the stage. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. 
I wanted to clarify something. I just uh, was reading the questions uh, about something I said in passing about the when here in this culture that uh, um, children go to, in case of divorce, children go to the custody of the mother, and in Muslim countries, children go to the custody of the father. That was uh, said very quickly. Um, so basically, I wanted to clarify that in Muslim countries, children don't just automatically go to the custody of the father. Obviously, you know, there's going to be case, but it's a case by case thing. But in general, uh, a child will go to the custody, custody of the mother up until a certain age, right? And the madahib have different answers for that, right? Up until the age of seven or eight, like that. And then they go to the custody of the father, right? Um, the point I was trying to make uh, was that they, the children follow the religions of their fathers, right? And so I just wanted to clarify that. And thank you for the question that came through. But uh, and thank you for bringing me on to clarify. Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's what the beautiful thing about our teachers, mashallah. They always want to clarify and make things easier for us to understand. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Hisham. Well, just as a reminder, if you want to share your uh, feedback, feel free to do so at celebratemercy.org forward slash night dash survey. And of course, you can hit the notification bell, hit that subscribe button and like. Inshallah, you can stay up to date with all the things that we're doing here at Celebrate Mercy. And thank you so much for being with me here tonight, being with our teachers, being a part of this wonderful community here uh, that Celebrate Mercy is uh, creating. Mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you all a beautiful evening. May he accept your duas, may he accept your fasting, may he give you a beautiful end to this beautiful month. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.